microphone, state your name and address for the record. You will be given five minutes to speak. At the conclusion of four minutes, you will hear a bell indicating that you have one minute remaining for a summation. At the end of your fifth minute, you'll hear a second bell indicating that your time has expired. Please address all questions to the chair and not to individual council members. The first speaker for this evening is Alphonse Willis. All right, good evening, Council. Good evening. Good evening. Excuse me, y'all. Uh, my name is Alphonse Willis. I reside at 248 Schlaw Street, Newark, New Jersey. I'm a, a resident of the city of Newark, and I'm also an employee for the city of Newark. Uh, before I go into the agenda about the affliction of the city employees by this administration, I would like to ask, can this agenda be switched back to the hearing of the citizens first? Seriously. And, and, the, and the reason why I want to say that is because y'all sitting up there voting on stuff, right? Y'all saying yes to this and yes to this and yes to that and nay this and all that. And the, and, the, and the citizens don't get an opportunity to speak about none of that stuff. The people that's at home watching this on TV, they don't want to sleep by now. Pe people got to go to work in the morning. A lot of the people that was here at the council meeting, you know, they got frustrated and irritated with all the waiting, and they done left and went home. We got jobs to go to. Look what time it is. It's like 20 minutes to 10. That's not right. Technically, that's a violation of the citizens Right, it is. It's wrong. You sitting up there, you making up rules as you go along, and the people y'all was elected to represent the people. Government is supposed to represent the people. We put y'all in those chairs. The way y'all have the agenda is inconveniencing the people. It is. That's what I'm saying. Now, I would appreciate it if you could change the agenda back to the hearing of the citizens. Really. Now, now I'm going to go into the agenda at hand. <laughs> I would like a response about will you change the agenda back or think about it or consider it because it's an inconvenience to the citizens, it really is. Okay. All right, Council President. Go ahead. You, you finish. Finish your, get through your time and then we'll talk. Okay. <clears throat> now I'll go into this, uh, the business at hand. I would like to start by making this statement right here. The edifice that's producing and reducing the people to begging, it needs fixing. In other words, this system of things that's being done by this administration, it needs fixing because it has reduced the people to begging. And it's producing beggars, it is. Now, the sanitation department has been working without a contract for three to four years. The, 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 this administration says we don't have no money. They say we are a distressed city. But you got $10 million to get waste management. You have no money whatsoever to give the residents that live here. Then you want to put ACE out and you want to bring waste management in. You want to give them a five-year contract at $10 million, but you ain't got no money for the people that live here. This roller coaster that you have coming in Newark of this privatization, that's all this administration wants to do is just privatize. They want to put us out and bring outsiders in. And that's not right. That's wrong. You for, for you to consider, you should have even you should have threw that mess back of waste management back in the administration's face, 
because if you're not going to let Ace keep the contract, then you need to get that damn contract to the city working and hire some more residents. We have taken your furloughs. We have made the sacrifices. We have been furloughed. You broke down our workforce. You reduced our workforce considerably. You, you tell us we got to do more with less. We even do that too. Now, the affliction that I was talking about, you got a lot of crime going on in the streets, but you got undercover officers following city workers. And the city workers is just doing their job. Let me tell you what they do, what these undercovers do. They plant refuge on the curb. They plant it out there on the curb, and then us as refuge collectors come up there and pick the stuff up, and then somebody whispering in their ear about giving them some money, and here come the inspector general ready to lock them up, write them up, suspend them, and everything else, and make us look bad when, actu when all actuality that's entrapment. We're paid to get that stuff on the curb. And if I and they pick it up and somebody offering them some money, and now you want to bring them up on charges, you want to suspend them, you want to fire them, you want to make us look bad because you're looking for excuses to privatize new. This roller coaster gotta stop. People losing their jobs all over the city and it's just us. It's just new residents losing their jobs. And then you tell us there's no money. You tell us we're a distressed city, but you steady got these million dollar contracts coming in here that you're saying yes, 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 yes to. The edifice that's producing beggars needs fixing. That means this system of things, something is wrong with the system of things. Council. Wrap it up, sir. Huh? Wrap it up, please. I'm going to wrap it up, Council. I'm going to wrap it up with a verse of scripture out of Matthew chapter 8, verse 20, which says this, foxes have holes, birds of the air, they have nests, but the sons and daughters of God, this system is putting them in a position where they won't even have a place to lay their head. So I'm just coming before you humbly, and I'm asking you, the whole council, can the Newark uh, city employees get a contract? We've been working without one for three to four years. Five, well, well, four years. It's been since 2008. We haven't had a contract. We've been asked to do more with less. We got less manpower, less trucks, we got primitive ancient equipment, and all they do is look for reasons to privatize sanitation. Why we can't have no new trucks? Why? We got trucks that's cutting off in the middle of the street. We got trucks the side of it, garbage is coming out the side of the truck, getting on residents' cars and all that type of stuff. Okay, wrap it up, sir. It's your final point. Okay. You've been lenient, and I appreciate that. But, Council, stop this privatization roller coaster ride that's coming in this city because the whole thing is orchestrated to put us out that live here and bring them in that don't live here. Thank you. Councilman Baraka. Uh, did. Hey, hey. <laughs> no contract. Councilman Baraka. I just, I just. 
I just want to make a point so everybody know we voted no to both waste management contracts. No, yes. So, yes. Waste management contracts. so uh, we did that while you were here. Well, but we all voted no because it didn't pass. So we need five votes. I, I, I initiated, but all the council people voted no. So we don't. We don't. The council supports. The council supports. Um, uh, you know, the city workers getting their jobs back and a contract for you guys. The council supports that wholeheartedly. I don't want you to believe that the council does not support that because we do. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Next speaker, Rahman Muhammad. Uh, Rahman Muhammad, 452 Washington Street. I, uh, you know, I, I had made a request of uh, President Payne here to allow for me to speak uh, last and allow for the uh, workers to actually speak before me uh, because I think it's important that the workers actually have their voices heard and tell you what's going on in their job because you hear my voice all the time uh, and it's just a normal thing and uh, I was denied that uh, that request but I, but I do want to say this because I think there's some tension between me and the uh, councilman because he's upset that uh, we didn't make an endorsement for his congressional race so let me make this clear let me make this clear. And I wish your uncle was sitting here because I want to really make it clear to him that we supported you to be a councilman. We supported you to be a freeholder. In addition, I was your main supporter for you to be mayor of this city in 2014. I was the main person advocating that. All of us, all of us, Donald, and you notice know our peers, we made a commitment to support Ron to run for Congress. And we're going to keep our word, whether you agree with that or not, or your uncle wants you to do um, the run for Congress or not. I'm a man of my word, and when I commit to doing something, I stand behind what I commit to do. But I want you to be clear, because I don't want you to make this a test, because whatever happened June 5th, you still got to be a Norcom. You still got to be a North resident. You still got to run for elected office. And you still going to need our support. And so I want you to understand, don't let your uncle get you into some trouble your behind ain't going to want to be in. Because you know. Because you know I ain't afraid of the fight. I want to be very clear of that. Just because you couldn't say no to your uncle, don't mean that I can't say no to your uncle. We committed to Rob. We're going to stick with Rob. This is not a personal thing about you. You had a chance to be mayor of this city. We were begging you to be mayor of this city. And you turned that down. So you got a right to do that. But don't take no attitude with any of us because we decided to keep our commitments that we made with Rob Wright's going to con. And I want to be clear to your family with that because this ain't a personal thing. This is what we decide to do together as a group, and we stick it to that movement. Now, let me get to uh, these sanitation workers, because I want the workers, I want them to continue on talking about their contract and their work issues, because I think it's important. But I want to speak in general of what the plot and the plan from this administration is, and what Kareem Arnold, as the director, uh, is doing down there to these guys. And that is that he's trying to establish a record of discipline and causing problems with these guys out in the field by giving them lack of equipment, by lessening their trucks on the roof, so he can make an excuse on why it is whereas we can't unprivatize the South War. Because unfortunately, we have said it time and time, we've already did an analysis, Mildred. We've already said, Amador, that it proved that it's cheaper to do the work in-house than it is to do it in contract. Not only is it cheaper, not only is it cheaper in sanitation, y'all, it's cheaper in the water department. But yet and still we continue to vote contracts to do asphalt, to do water department work, where we can hire North residents who pay taxes in this town to do those jobs. And to get training to do that job. But yet and still, we got an administration and we got uh, directors that work for this administration who main focus is to make everybody else enrich themselves. And if you think them boys who work for these contractors don't make work, more money than city workers, you fooling yourself. We pay for their raises. We pay for their families that have a decent living. But yet and still, we continue to the contract and outsource millions of dollars every damn year for workers in this town to work. And now I know that y'all stand up against
against the sanitation. I do, I get that. And I know y'all support, every one of y'all support against them privatizing the sanitation. So I'm not, I'm just saying, but y'all, we gotta do something bigger if this guy's not listening. It's no way in hell that we voted down the race management contract two or three times already on this council, and yet this administration still has not sat down with y'all to come up with a plan on how they're going to remove garbage in the South Fork. What they've done is sent their dog out, Kareem Arnold, to go against the workers in the sanitation department so that he can try to give you a reason on why it is you don't want. So I'm going to be clear, because I want the workers to know. We don't support bad workers. I want to be clear about that. We don't support bad workers. We want people to do their job. And these guys do their job, like you know, my father said. They work with less equipment, less staff, and they still get the job done that they had 92 more people working to help them two years ago. And they still get the job done. And yet still, we want to pay waste management $10 million uh, for five years to do a contract where we can bring Norcas back to work, get new equipment for them, and do that job they sell. Now, I don't know what you got to do to get this guy off his behind. I don't know what it is. But you the counsel, take him to court. So do something to let him know that he can't keep spitting in your face and not doing nothing about it. We got to correct this stuff, y'all. Yeah? Okay. You have to fight for these people. Me talking at this mic don't mean a goddamn thing if you ain't making sure he does what he's supposed to do. This guy, instead of him wasting time freaking fixing Chris Christie's tie on a goddamn video that he out here thinking is a joke, he on his knees, he on his knees fixing Chris Christie ties on a damn video, and he thought that shit was funny. Yo, that wasn't funny to me. That, that wasn't funny. I, I'm wrapping up, Don. But I want to be clear, because Cody Booker thought that video was funny, y'all. That wasn't funny to me. The mayor of North was on his damn knees fixing the call of the goddamn governor who's goddamn put policies that's affecting his damn city, and he thinks it's a damn joke, and we need to be making sure we remind him that it's not. We have, a, we have a speaker at the mic. What do we want? 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 All right. Your name, please, sir. What do we want? What do we want? My name is William Lane. I live 64 Columbia Street. I live right around the corner from the Prudential Building. I've been coming down here, I've been talking about the fact that every time there's an event going on at the Prudential Building, these people do not park in the parking lot. They park on my block. They always park on my block. I, I heard a couple of shootings last Saturday. People got shot. Now, something got to give, but, but right now, I don't even care about that. What I'm, I want to thank Rockmar. My main uh, concern right now is about my job, and it's about our leadership that we have. Mr. Cory Booker, he do not deserve the right to be called the mayor. He is trying to take he done already put it out there. He taking our jobs. He done laid off. He done, he done laid off all of these gentlemen that used to work on the job. 92 guys, hardworking men, laid them off, brought them back, and called them per diems. Per diems workers. Now, these guys work only if they're called. These guys have been working for the city for years and now 
they are sitting by the phone waiting for huh? one person to call them. Cory Booker done took over our jobs. He's trying to privatize everything in this city. He's trying to take our schools away. He's trying to privatize our water. And right now, right now, he's trying to actually close down sanitation. We're not gonna have it. We're gonna, we're gonna fight hard. We're gonna stand firm. Now check this out. We also believe that y'all came up with some kind of idea to sabotage this meeting because y'all waited and discussed it and talked about nothing <laughs> this whole time. We got it. All, of my, all of my co-workers here, we get up at 4.30 in the morning and the people always talk about no sanitation but we always get the job done. We always get the job done. We can do the South War too. Only thing we ask that y'all vote on this contract so we can get some money. I pray and hope that y'all don't let us go out of 2012 and go into 2013 with the same type of problem. We need our money. We need it. Y'all sit up there, y'all get your money. We need our money. I'm trying to tell you, man, you know, you know, everything. It's going on four years. Gas done went up, milk done went up, but our salary is still the same. It's still the same. We ask for y'all to, we, we just ask y'all to just consider us. Think about it. I mean, vote that we get a reasonable contract. Vote that we actually get a raise this year. We don't want no bonus. We don't want nothing like that. We want a raise. The money come from y'all, whatever decision that y'all make. Please make an honest decision. Thank you, sir. Next speaker. 10 for Evans. We have a citizen at the mic. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise First the Lord. of all, I cannot talk over somebody else. Okay? My name is 104 Evan, 14900 and Terry, P.O. Box 2367, Newark, New Jersey. Today, I'm coming with you with the singer. Here's some picture. Please take this to uh, Lewis. Lewis, I walk with you. <laughs> All right, I'm going with this hymn, listen careful, listen careful what I'm saying. This is, this is Madison Avenue, 11-25 Madison Avenue, the senior citizen's building. These are pitching a tuck in their apartment. I went and did my homework to those buildings, in their building. Number one, I want all seniors stand up and be counted for. Stand up. These are the people. These are the people here with their partner. You got Loaded Owen. You got Cooper, Audacity Cooper, Jeanette Cooper, Rose Ad Johnson, Sarah Way, Maria Harvey, Nathan John Thompson, and Ms. Boone, who is the president of the Tender Association. Now, the reason why I came up here today is to bring them. Every time you all get out to vote, y'all go to these singing sellers buildings. I went in these singing sellers buildings. Their rug, their apartment is filthy. I went and I also got Louis Cantana, a we are working with this now. This is Mr. Fox on that building. I 
happened, happened. Y'all sat here. I told y'all 2006. Y'all sat here and let them flip, 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 flip. I called Mr. Apple today, and he said, no, I don't own no property. I said, who owned the property? They're still down Redison. She said, I don't know why they haven't changed it. Five, 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 let's have me the same thing. Let me tell you something. I am not going to have this done 2014. If you cannot do nothing for these senior citizens, I know you cannot do nothing for these contract here. These guys talking about working, the main problem is they the one who here to put us here. Every day and every night, these people come here to the meeting. We always say we're going to do something for them. We're going to do it. And don't do one darn thing. But this time, I'm on my foot on this my own self. It will be done. This in the South Ward, Councilor Lawrence, knows the Trump, Donna Payne, Lewis just start on hear them. Raz to rock them. They just call you, but I make sure they make sure to call you and get this done. You understand me? And before I close for these senior citizens, I'm not gonna give y'all no month. I'm going to give you two weeks to get over there to that building. All right. Here's my next thing here. Hold it. That's the senior. My next thing is, Mr. Hold it. Mr. Amador, you come here. Hold it. You come here and, and vote it. Had them people come in here and voted for that power to go into the East Ward. Listen to me good. If it was containing to build a school on Oliver Street, they couldn't build a school. They did with the rock. It was too containing. So you tell me now, you went there and they, you, they gave you $5,000 to build something for the East Ward. First off, let me tell you something. <laughs> Ain't that what it say, $5 million? Did he say that? $5 million. Let me tell you something. You didn't need to take no five million for no people to build no power plant down there. Let me tell you something. You got high pride people down there. Those people who live in those buildings down there, bring them business down there, you could have been got money to help build those children things down there if you wanted. You send up here lying to your people in the East Ward. East Ward, look for a new candidate. Look for a new candidate for the East War. I do not want to see Amador back here again when these people catching hell. And you are going. When I say you're going, you're going. Okay, I'm telling you now. As I said before, okay. Raz the Rocker, Mills the Trump, and, and, my, and Ronald Rice did not vote for it. Sharif vote for, but he's not sure what he was voting for. As I said before, nobody come in here again and bring something at the last minute for you to vote on. As I say, folks, 10 folks sign out. Y'all have a bless and a lovely. Uh -huh. You are leaving it's Ward. Have a good Listen, night. Thank you. Um, Council President, that's the, um, that's the first that uh, I, uh, 10 that's the first that I heard of the issues over there on Madison Avenue, we'll be over there. It wouldn't take us two weeks. If they call us, we'll be over there the same day. Just let us know. You ain't got to come and threaten to beat us up. We'll go over there because we want to go over there. All you got to do is call us, and we'll be over there to make sure, you know, we can do what we can, we can for you guys over there. Just let us know. Good evening, Council. Next, uh, next speaker. Uh, sir, uh, the next speaker is um, Gail Cheney Field Jenkins. Gail Cheney Field Jenkins, okay? You have to wait for your name to be called. Is he up here? Good evening again, Council. Good evening, Good evening. Council. Um, number one. Can somebody please, Mr. Chair, through your auspicious being tonight, can you please explain who
made the decision to change the hearing of citizens from the beginning of the council meeting to the end. All, all of you did? It was a council. Okay, yes, so, it was a council decision. so it was a unanimous decision? Yes. Yeah, we added. Okay. Well, not only did we change that, but we added, we took it back from three minutes so, to five minutes. We added time, and it was moved to the back, but it was a council decision. Okay. In the so, entire council. All right, so I, I heard, I heard Councilman Baraka, as well as Councilman Amador, as well as Councilman Crump, as well as um, Councilman Quintana, as well as Councilman Rice and Ramos allude this evening that if something's not working, that you're amenable to changing it. So with the council and its unanimous of wisdom, look into changing the hearing of citizens because there was a young lady who was with um, Brother Rahman Muhammad just now who left and said, I got 12 kids to teach tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, I think Evangelist Willis brought it up. You know, you all signed on for the seat. That's right. And so if anybody's going to be inconvenienced, it's the elected officials. Because when you leave out of here tonight, you're going to jump in your car and, and go home or go to another meeting. But to have citizens not be able to address their council until afterwards, it really is paramount to taxation without representation. It gets, it gets on that narrow line. And, and it gets back to, and, and Councilman Amador, I'm going to bring especially for you. And for Councilwoman Crump, I'm going to bring especially for you um, the information regarding tax abatements. Because you have some 15-year tax abatements that have expired, and they're industrial, not the, not the residents, because we don't bam them over the head enough, but just industrial I mean, industrial 15-year tax abatements that need to be recalculated. And commercial. Excuse me? Industrial and commercial. They're commercial and industrial. Okay. They're commercial and industrial. And as a matter of fact, um, you guys had a study done. Um, and the administration left it on the table. And it goes back to the point that the administration and listen, every administration does it, okay? Every administration does it. That's, that's the pull of the executive branch and the legislative branch, okay? The executive branch is trying to ram the MUA, and the way to defeat the MUA is to come up with additional revenue. And you have two of them on the table that the council has, the going after the, the industrial and commercial tax abatements that you did, you paid $200 for that study, and they never uh, pursued it. And the other one is the Port Authority monies that you had a window, a five-year window, that we voted on. I'm sorry, not we, I didn't vote on it. That the previous council voted to recalculate the monies that was coming from Port Authority. And that window is still there. You have the, the, the window is still there to recalculate. And in that, there's about $60 million, and you, you're shaking your head, Councilman Baraka, because you know. And there's $60 million there. So you could tell um, the, um, the actor to take the MUA and stuff that and replace the revenue with some real money that can come in immediately. Okay, um, but the fifty thousand dollars for the Axion LLC—that um, was the, the the accounting group that yes. you guys voted on earlier. Yes. Um, again, Newarkers, we talk about jobs for Newarkers. We got people that's hired now that can't count how much a basketball player is making, so we can get the payroll taxes from them. And you got people that can't count whether there's parking revenue that's been a market increase in 
and that money should be coming and be seen in the budget immediately and it's not being utilized the way it should be. So I just ask that you guys look at going back to the hearing of citizens prior to the meetings and when you do your motions. And um, Councilman Baraka, um, thank you for um, taking the bullet for everybody. Because you step right up, like Secret Service, you know. It was all of us, okay? And um, that's, that's all people want to hear from you all. They want to hear you all because, you know, it's not just hearing us citizens, it's you all participating. It's, it's called democracy. Thank it's you. called you all talking to us and, and hearing from us, but hearing from the fact that you got senior citizens out here this time of night. You got people who have children they have to get home to. And, and, and you're not really discouraging people from watching the entire council meeting and being bored to death because they, they wait for this portion, but it's not fair to the citizens. And, and there's so many things that have been done unfair to the citizens already. We've already decimated the, 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 the working class that existed. Okay, yeah. so Thank you. let's look at the fact that you all are Newarkers. At the end of the day, you know, because when the umbilical cord is cut and my man, my man run and do the stick and move, because he gonna stick and move and leave y'all holding the, the bag full of crap, okay? Um, remember, y'all come from us, y'all about us, so do something for us. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, just real quick. Councilman Rice. Yeah, uh, just to uh, the Councilwoman's uh, 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 notion, that report was, was a Wiener Lesniak report, was that not? Yes. So I'm, I'm going to ask the clerk's office if you could identify it, particularly to, to give us that report. Um, and I'm sorry, Councilwoman, what year, do you know what year roughly that report was finished? And then you had another part of it that was finished in 2009. That's, I have that, that one. Part that went to Brick City Development right. Corporation. Right. And um, Stefan Pryor kept that part. The, 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 the one I'm interested in is the commercial and industrial tax abatements language that came out of that report. Um, opening up the recalculations. Yeah, the true up for the Port Authority. Yeah. We, we, we uh, in, in the proposed budget, even though we have not introduced that budget yet because the, the, the numbers are not right yet from the administration for us to introduce it, they do have a, they do have a proposal in terms of what the true up is going to mean in terms of the, the last five years, the, the discussions they had with the Port Authority. So when we actually start looking at the budget, um, at the budget hearings, I'm, 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 um, I'm going to hope that you'd be there so we can take a look at what the true up numbers are that are coming back from Port Authority to us. Indeed. 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 But Ken, I just want to make sure that report, I have the 2009, I found that in my office. I don't have 2008. Okay. okay. All right, thank you. Next speaker. Farouk Abdulaziz. <laughs> hey, don't be trying to give me a trouble. Hey, uh, Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. First name is Farouk. Last name is Abdul Aziz. 102 Eastern Parkway. I'm going to be as gentle as possible because y'all know I can be a hellraiser. This meeting tonight is going to be dedicated to my father who deceased 13 years ago today. His name was Roscoe Wright, but his gambling name was Shitty Rock. And all the hustlers, Gut Bucket, Johnny Shaw, Go H, and all them kind of people, that's the area that I came out of. You're right. Ace Deuce Jimmy make the whole world shimmy. So I just want to give my father some props right now because... I don't think he did too bad. He said he broke the mold when he made me. My topic tonight is unity in the community. 
Unity in the community. What do that mean? And I keep saying as I'm looking around, and I'm saying with Quintana and Gonzalez and Ramos, the Hispanic community look like they ain't not being affected about all this that we going on with. Can they tell us something that we don't know? I'm, basically, duh. My first thing on my issue was, I came a month ago because I was down in the south part of the state in Florida, and I asked that same question about this public hearing. And to really bring it to full tuition, we're not going to play the John Boehner stuff right now. We're not going to play the Republicans that ain't going to support the Democrats. This is an easy thing that y'all can do right now because y'all are the legislative body. So if you want to be fair, this is the fair thing to do. And I'm giving you a little hit on it. One meeting, you got your business with us being at the bottom. The next meeting, our business is up on the top and y'all business under the bottom. That's fair, ain't it? So y'all need to take a vote on that right now. And that's easy. That's easy, ain't it? Hello? I don't, no, I'm not going to leave. I'm going to stay stuck just on that one issue. Because the first brother came, the first brother that came, he addressed that issue. The second, Rockman, he addressed the issue. Gail Chaneyfield, she addressed the issue. And y'all are the legislative body, so let's have some backbone right now and take a vote. Let's have some backbone. Let's hear him. This is, this is the hearing of citizens. But I want to hear what he got to say. This is the hearing of citizens. Is not the voting portion of the meeting. We can take it up. The voting part of the, the voting part of the meeting is over. I now I'm we a, can I'm, now based okay. based on what you're saying, it is can be discussion for the special on Tuesday. It's a, it's a no brainer, and you can't say it because I came before this board. I think it was, the, the, I think it was in the uh, 2010 in February. And I brought Darren Nance's case up with y'all giving all these white folks all this money fighting them, and y'all took a vote. It was seven of y'all, and you voted seven to zero right then when I asked you to sponsor the thing. That's true. Am I right or wrong? You recall that? You want me to bring the tape? So you can do it right now. Let's stop jiving. Let's stop jiving. I'm here for business right now. You, you took all your business? Take care of our business right now. That's easy. Everybody would agree with that. One time, your business on top, our business on the bottom. Next time, our business on the top, yours on the bottom. Let's be fair. So that means at the next meeting, you're saying that we should start with the hearing the citizens first. Basically, if you want to do it like that. But be fair. 50-50. 50-50 is never highway robbery. Can I get, can I get an amen on that? Or, I mean, uh, what we're going to say is... One second. One second. I want to stay focused. I, I want to stay focused. Mr. Aziz, no, but I'm saying, let's Mr. Be Aziz, fair. yes. To finish, finish your statement, and then we that will on me, we'll no. finish your statement, and we'll respond. Is it a fire? On, is it a fire in here? I ain't started yet. Mr. Aziz, I heard you, man. All right. I heard you. All right. The next thing, I ain't never, I ain't never supported no devils. But guess what? We got the devils over here in the hockey game. Now, they like our homeboys and homegirls right now. So, at the very least, since they are homies, I got to say, Devils, let's kick some butt and win the game. Let's beat the Rangers. <laughs> now, here's another thing. The only little thing that I used to enjoy was Little Z. The Soul Circus. What happened to the Soul Circus? Corey said no. Where is the University Soul Circus? Here there's one little thing that the African American enjoy. We can't go to Ringling, Barnum and Bailey and get off our thing like we do at the Soul Circus. And we can't even get that. We can't even get that. But you know, I don't want to blame nobody, but in the syndicate, like Kosha Nosha, you know who y'all was that was with Corey. And I can respect Miss Crump right now. Because Miss Crump said, I'm not drinking the juice no more. The juice don't take good. And I know, I know one of his confidants that the minute Corey stopped, he run right behind him in his butt, and that's Mr. Gonzalez. 
So I'm saying to y'all, have some backbone and have some spine. Just like with the sanitation business, it's always been a gangster's thing. It's always been controlled by La Costa Nocia. Now, here's our La Costa Nocia with these black brothers about some damn garbage. Get them some garbage trucks. Because cleanliness is next to godliness. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Let's cut the nonsense out. Get them whatever they need. Put them back to work. Get it. Hey, that's a no-brainer also. Okay. What is our problem? All right. Start wrapping it up, please, sir. Relax, man. I am relaxed. I done heard you for two. I done, I've been here since 6.30, and we didn't start for three hours and six minutes with y'all nonsense. Not, not nonsense, but y'all business. So let us take it out now. My next issue. Does the speed bumps apply to the North or the East District? Does the speed bumps apply to the North or the East? Because again, every time y'all do some business, look like you get old boy to do the damn business. The speed bump is here, the sign is here. The speed bump is here, the sign is here. Engineers say, if the speed bump is here, then the sign should be 15 yards away. And then insult the injury, you come with some damn white paint. It's supposed to be yellow. And it's supposed to say caution. What is your problem? Who is your engineer? Come on, man, let's wake up because I don't want to tear my vehicle up and I'm tearing it up. Speed bumps. Let's, okay. let, let's, let's, let's take care of that. Right, Mr. Aziz, you're going to have to wrap it up, sir. All right. My mentor, Al Hodge Malik Shabazz, you know the... You know, Martin Luther King, he was a great brother. We shall overcome. And he was singing. Michael said, we will overcome. And we swing it. So now, this Saturday, they're doing a special tribute to him, and it's going to be an annual thing over in New York. I think it's up at the Autobahn Ballroom or over there on Broadway. So all those who can make it, let's shake it and get on up there and support that effort because, again, he was a prince. And a lot of us that's activists right now, a lot of us is riding off the Fannie Lou Hamers, the Marcus Garveys, the Frederick Douglasses, and that's those souls that I have. Not trying to be Savior Glover or Gregory Hines or Sammy with this tap nonsense. So I'm saying to all y'all, especially you African Americans, let's get some spines. Because I don't know where this political thing is going, I, I didn't think that you was going to be no mayor. And I'm saying, I'm listening to Roz, and I happened to be in Florida when I heard your state of address. It made a lot of sense. Because that Newark Airport is nowhere in the world that none of us should be broke when the Port Authority is getting billions and y'all want to give us some damn millions. Thank Let's get on board with some, with some you, real sir. thought. But I'm saying right now, what pleasant. you going to do about this, this thing pleasant. that I asked you from the gate? And that was... Council One President. time y'all got your thing, and the next time we got our thing. Cause you, can you address that, please? I'm done. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. We might as well change it to 20 minutes. Abdus had Farouk boy. <laughs> so um, I just want to. I just wanted to. Uh, even if we don't vote on it tonight, um, I think at the special at least we should. Uh, and I would like to make a formal motion that we. Uh, do what Farouk Abdul Aziz said, which is, I think, is a good compromise to uh, one meeting. We allow the Hitler citizens to go first, and the next meeting, we allow the Hitler citizens to go the way we organize it. I support that, and I make a motion that that happens. I'll second it. I'll second it, Ken. <laughs> Councilwoman, Councilwoman Crump. I'll second that motion. Okay. Ron seconded. Yeah. Right. Sorry. So if he seconded it, can we vote on it? Roll call. Uh, it'll be discussed at the special meeting on Tuesday. He just, he just I still just, just, just want to get the call. last word straight, just like a Caucasian. He's vote, a, man. He said roll call. Don't be scared. Vote. He's, Manera, we love you, baby. Ma, I love you too if you're looking. One love. Is it a formal motion or what we doing? I have a motion, but I have I, I, no one. I, it was second. We have a motion on the floor. I need the audience to allow us to do the roll call. The voting part of the meeting is over. Am this I correct? Is a motion. Excuse me? It's a motion. Huh? This is a motion. Council can do a motion at any time. We can make motions. 
It's not. It's not a change. It's simply the, the councilman is simply asking that we discuss this at the next special meeting. That's the all motion, the motion is. The motion has been uh, moved and seconded to discuss at the special meeting on Tuesday. Right. Roll call. Yes. 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 Okay, next speaker. Deborah Deans. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Council. Excuse me, Delore. Excuse me, the lady behind you is the next speaker, you. sir. Okay, don't call your name. Good evening, council members. Good evening. <clears throat> My name is Deborah Deans. I live at 129 Auschwitz. Mm. Ran the death camps that were run by 129 Auschwitz. Wow. Yes, the death camps run by Mike Weeder, Little Hitler, and his henchman, A.B. Frischman Goebbels, remember them? Them, them uh, uh, guys, well, they have 129 Chancellor Avenue and it's running like a death camp. I'm still being stifled with the uh, toxic fumes that's made up of chemicals of, of allergens and steroids. Thank you. That's why my body is all swollen out of proportion. I constantly have to take anti-allergens so my tongue won't swell up daily. They can con still control my electricity. I've had uh, 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 visits by the bogus PSENG managers and everybody telling me that my smart meter is no longer my meter. My meter now is the building me meters, but yet my lights are still being cut off at, w at the will of the landlord, and my TV suppressed at the will of the landlord, and PSENG will not do anything about it. The latest attack on me and my mom was May the 4th. We came out to go get into our car, and they had turned they turned the uh, uh, parking lights, lot lights out, Raz. They are out. They're out right now and vandalized my car. They won our parking spaces. They're trying to wrangle our apartment of 30 years away from us. I've tried to address it every way that I could legally. They went into court and got a backdoor illegal 12% rent increase, Mr. Sharif. And I've tried to get somebody to help to assist us. I'm asking you guys now to help us get our out of the pocket, recoup our out of pocket for the vandalism. As you can see in there, I, I put in there where the municipal city code enforcement had cited that they put a fence there. We pay $40 per spot. I pay $80. I have two spots. And they never do it. Matter of fact, they shit flooded us on Easter from the 7th to the ninth, I called uh, uh, your um, Raz Baraka's, um, your satellite uh, office. I got Mitty. Mitty called downtown to try to get code enforcement, what's his name, um, Arnold, up there. He still has not come to our apartment. He still has not come to our apartment. 
So I'm asking you for this latest attack to please assist us to get our out of pocket, recoup our out of pocket because there was supposed to be a gate up there. We sit right under the surveillance cameras. This is why they turned the light out in the parking lot to vandalize our car. Please help us. So Ms. Please help us. I put everything in the package that you would need to help us. So, Ms. Dean. You can see that they, they, they just, uh, from their nose at any ordinance, any citations of uh, 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 locks broken, uh, 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 cracked pavement. Ms. Ms. Dean. Yes. This report that you gave us is from uh, August 28th of 09. So you're, you're telling me that the uh, gate is still It missing? has not been done. It's the same report that Mildred Crump had the top and bottom. Only thing was done when we left our apartment for 30 days was the floors and the intercom. Nothing else has been done. Okay. All right, we need to have, we need to have code inspection follow up, uh, you know, in terms of this. I mean, 09, that's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, it's ridiculous. No, it is. No. They, 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 and it was never reinspected. Right in your face is telling you you can't make them do anything. It was never reinspected. And they they're going to they reinspect it and reinspect, but no follow through. They just leave it like that. I was telling you before when I was here that lights are out in the parking lot, and when that light go out in the parking lot, the whole of Parkview Terrace is dangerously dark. Right about that. And as you know, we have re-entry, drug rehab is in those buildings there. They harass us constantly, ring our bells. Okay, Councilman Crump, did you? Uh, no, you actually you asked part of the question that I was going to ask. Okay. Okay. This is what we, we was trying to get the state right. inspector, but uh, uh, Krispy Kreme cut their budget. Krispy Kreme's cut their budget so he could be coincide with Corey and nothing to be done. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we're going to. I'm Ms. asking Deans, you, please. We're going we're gonna to instruct. Um, uh, Mr. Crudup to, to have that inspected again to see what's been abated and where we are in terms of this, all right? So, Mr. Clerk, would you make a, a uh, memo to send to code enforcement? But you, as you can see, the, by the lights being out. Now, that's a dangerous, that's, that's absolutely unacceptable. Right. They can absolutely. come and uh, they send their own people down there to uh, vandalize my car. I've asked you. Uh, they raised out the corrupt judges, Malon Fast, Ned Rosenberg, gave them a backdoor rent increase of 12%. Mm. Tell me that's not fair. Tell me that's fair. That's unacceptable. It's not. It would put a hardship on me and my mom. <laughs> we, I have been blackballed. I can't find a damn job. Okay. We will have code enforcement come out as soon as possible. And please, could you please call me? Are you, aren't you on the uh, board of um, housing, Mr. Sharif? No. Yeah, I'm the, the chairman of the public private Yes, housing. and we were talking about this uh, 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 illegal uh, uh, rent increase. We need to abate it because they did it illegally. They didn't go through rent control which my apartment is rent controlled. They took us to court on an illegal uh, a lease signing and flipped it and turned it into a, 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 a rent hearing. Okay, Ms. Deans, we'll, have, we'll definitely have code enforcement out there. But you need to, to have somebody out there to speak to me about the rents too. We can't afford this rent. And it was okay. done illegally. Okay. I have all the documentation. Huh? I'm sorry. 
I have all the documentation that you need. Okay. Okay? All right. Thank you, man. I'll be looking forward to seeing you. Thank you. Guys. Okay, next speaker. Manura El Bomani. Oh, there she is. I won't be long, but I'll be strong. All right. Manera El Bumani, P.O. Box 3597, Newark, New Jersey, 07104. Giving honor to the Creator who gave honor to the original goddess, the black woman, giving honor to our freedom fighters, those who pass and those who are present. I want to give honor and birthday greetings to two of the boldest black men who braced America, the minister, Louis Farrakhan, and Malcolm X. I salute you, my fellow Torians. In the words of Gandhi, people won't resort to crime if their local skills were rebribed. Poverty is the worst form of violence. No jobs, no housing, no economics, no proper education, no justice equals no votes. So I'm calling on 50,000 to stand up and organize a black block vote. I said it before, and it ain't nothing gonna stop me from saying it. I'm also calling on all the women in the trades to get up off your rump the dump and stand up for your fair equity, which is 7% seven per seven on these redevelopments. Failure to heed to this call will result in consequences. You can come here and complain, explain, and whatever you want to do, but if you don't get up and stand up for your rights like Bob Marley said, get up, stand up, stand up for your rights, there will be consequences. So bring your resumes, get your job referrals, because I can give you one to training and jobs if you skilled, and if you unskilled, I can give you a referral to training resources where we got women right now being trained at Essex County, at New, and at the Laborers Union down in um, Morris, Monroe Township, um, we could get you in training. So if you serious or if you skilled, like I said, get off your rump the dump and stand up for your rights. Now, the PLA agreement, I wasn't here to catch it because I had a, um, my final exam to um, complete my apprenticeship so um, I came in late on this, but I'm going to touch on it right now. The PLA, I'm not against any beneficial labor agreement um, or redevelopments that take taking place in the city of Newark, but what I don't agree with is the business as usual that's been taking place for so long in this city, it needs to stop. And also, there's no community participation. Now, I know you sat down with whoever you set down to devise this PLA, and I'm gonna give you some things that I have some issues in regard to that PLA. I need a few more minutes also. Um, I wanna know, do this PLA uh, applies to residential as well as con commercial? Also, is a piece of paper which we got so many ordinance and, and, and we got the affirmative action which I'll touch on, um, who will be doing the enforcement, serious enforcement, and also applying penalties um, for this ordinance. Yeah. Also, um, I'm kind of confused with the PLA and um, the affirmative action because um, the PLA states uh, a number, a percentage, and then you got the um, affirmative action who, which also states another number. Now, um, the body capacity that you all presented and, and voted on, I heard today, which was 10 million for 
was a commercial and five million for public. How do you expect, um, I'm going to look out for mine, African American contractors and women owned contractors to, uh, you know, get bonded with that 10 million? You know it's a hard time with them, you know, already. So you need to look into that um, because that's a no-no. We need to do some changes with that because we need, like we spoke before, that you was going to actually try to help the minorities, particularly black-owned contractors, women-owned contractors, to get bonded and reach their capacities. We need to find out how can that happen. Also, portability. Now, we, we want skills across all trades. Now, if a, if a construction laborer or a general laborer is working on a construction site, I think this individual should be portable because they're multi-skilled. A construction laborer, no mason, carpentry, they, they know basically all the tra trades and then they can be unskilled workers as well. So we need to look into that. So when a person is on a job, they don't have to downsize with that contractor and wait for them to come back whenever the next assignment or the phase go. They should be able to go on and be portable to another contractor like a, a carpenter, electrician, because they're general uh, construction laborers or laborers. So they shouldn't be able to be laid off. And then also, if they're Newarkers, they should remain on that job also. So those, would be, those should be um, browning points. Um, you know, I'm very much concerned about the lack of opportunities that African American and, and, and women and our young adults, especially youth build, you know, they, they trying so hard to stay out of trouble. And, and I've been where they've been, and I've seen what they've seen. So, my whole thing is, is that I just hope that this do incorporate a, a, the, the fair equity that's mandated with funding that you receive from federal and state taxation that we get our equality, our, our equal treatment on these jobs. We need to stop the, the racist hiring practices. And if we don't get that, we need to actually um, protest and halt some of these um, projects. We don't need to be, and I respect, all due respect to um, our organizations who are rallying for jobs in one Pacific area, but we need to take it to these re redevelopments and shut them down if we don't see our people and fair equity um, on these job sites, especially Newarkers. Okay, I'm gonna ask you to wrap up, man, please. Um, also, with the Community Benefits Agreement. You definitely need to look into that. There needs to be some kind of equity in the folks who receiving these community benefits that's been receiving them. Some of them not even um, providing the services that they're receiving the money for. Like for instance, let me talk about the money that uh, Newark Reentry receiving. Now, We've been asking over and over and over and over and over and over and over to have these people come to present. We get ready to, uh, if you voted on the 750, I asked you the last time, what is it going to go through, salary or services? Because as far as I know, there is no reentry program that exists at Essex County. We don't know what kind of services they offer um, downstairs, and I told you before, OAR is basically on life support. One of the oldest standing uh, offenders program that's been the first of the first that I'm actually a uh, product right, of. Bonnie, you're going so, to you're gonna have to end. You're going to have to close. I'm, I'm going to continue. The state the no, you're um, going to have to close, man. <laughs> this, we, listen, we don't, we don't face so much. I want to talk about the responsible tax abatement that I submitted. Yeah, I know it's PLA supposed to uh to Man, I give it I've given you over I've given you over nine minutes. You're gonna have to finalize, all right? You're done. I'm sorry. I gave you I gave you additional time. Now you're done. All right? Those? Whether they commercial, 
Those meetings are public meetings. Those Pardon meetings that. are public meetings, and you have the right to be there. Excuse me? You had a meeting. Those meetings are public meetings, and you have the right never, to be there. I never, I never uh, heard of a tax well, meeting. Well, every Tuesday. It's, it's, it's every Tuesday morning before yeah. the... Actually, I submitted a request, and I never got a response back from Katana, who's the chair of that committee. Okay. President. Councilman Rice. Yeah, just, just real quick. I'm going to try to hit real quick the questions you asked. So residential, commercial... It's, it's most, it, I mean, it, it does apply to residential, but residential probably doesn't rise to the level of five or 10 million. So it's probably gonna be mostly commercial. The administration will do the enforcement. That's the way it is. We just both got a tweet, council president and I, the administration said this was a huge win for labor. So I'm assuming they are down with enforcing it. Uh, uh, affirmative, well, I'm just trying to answer, hold up. Affirmative action versus the PLA. Affirmative action is, is, a, is a racial preference. The PLA is just a union preference. So, that, so some of the same federal laws that apply to affirmative action will apply to PLA, but not necessarily. Um, smaller firms will not really be competitive because smaller firms really will not have the capacity to do five or, or, or 10 million in terms of construction. It's just, it's just not, so it really doesn't apply to them. It really applies to the big dogs who do this and make sure they include folks from our city and so on and so forth. The pre-apprenticeship program is to make sure that they go out and get a pool of folks who are, who are, who are heretofore don't have the skills and make sure they get the training. That was the reason why the PLA, I think, and all our, all our colleagues supported this time, because it wasn't just the PLA, like when the mayor proposed it, it was a PLA with a real deep and paid for pre-apprenticeship program so that we get more people to participate. And lastly, uh, the portability issue, I think, was we're going to just do trial and error. We got to wait and see, I think, a year to see how what, what happens with the folks that go through that program. But the last piece is, it's a beginning, not an end. I don't want anybody to think that the PLA is just something that's going to be in stone. We can always improve upon it. We can always add pieces to it. So the community benefits agreement piece of it, I think, is something that we probably will want to do as we see how this thing goes forward to make it deeper and make it stronger. Ms. Pomani. Uh, I mean, it's, I it's, mean, it's public and private. There's a lot of money coming down, not only with commercial, but there's all, also the NSP that's going to. We, we, we can make public do it, but we have to probably offer incentives for private folks to do it. Because okay. we can't, we can't, you know, you can't mandate private folks. All right. You can offer incentives, but, you know. All right. It's going on 15 minutes. I'm going to ask the next speaker, Ms. Pomani. Ms. Pomani. Ms. Pomani. Ms. Pomani. Ms. Bumani, you, you know, you know there's, there's discussion about residents being here late. So all you're doing is add to the people that are being kept here. You've had more than your time. You had three times your time. You've had three times your time. You've had three times your time, Ms. Bumani. You had three times your time. I've given more time to everybody, all right? I've given more than ample time to everyone. But when you get, but when you get into three times the time, Ms. Bamani, I'm going to ask you to sit down. So next speaker, Mr. Clerk, next speaker. Vernon Maynor. Vernon Maynor. I thank you for your time. I will ask um, if the other council men and women, are, have they left? I just, well, I'd like for them to be able to hear this. I think it's very important, especially for Animal Ms., uh, uh, Ramos, they, they because we are part do. of his, his ward, and, and Councilman Crump, because a lot of the work that we're collaborating with She's within here. our organization is dealing with. She's still her. here. OK. So you would like me to wait for them to come, or you would like me to continue? Yeah. Can't do that. I, Okay. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. Thank you, man. Well, oh, greetings to the New York they, City you know, Council you're, members you're allowed to, uh, and citizens I mean, of Newark, New Jersey. To to the bathroom now. My name is Vernon Maynard, the president of the Newark Youth Athletic Foundation 
and the Brick City Lions, which is a nonprofit youth football league that is a part of North Jersey Pop Warner, one of the largest football and cheerleading conferences in Pop Warner Eastern Region, with over 21 teams in Central and North Jersey and Brooklyn, New York. First, I would like to thank Councilman Ramos' office for the work they did in helping us to, to acquire and to work with School Stadium. We would like to thank Roz Baraka for working with Nasir Gaines and actually getting the ball rolling with that whole part. We thank you. We'd like to also thank the other distinguished councils for their support of our organization, both verbally and through assistance over the last two months. Because of our combined desire to make an influence in the lives of our youth in Newark, our organization has already registered over 100 youth into our league. We have a strong, diverse group of kids from various cultures and backgrounds from all over the city, all over the city, playing together and establishing everlasting bonds. We already feel we will meet our goal of servicing 200 youth in our league to accommodate the demand of student athletes in Newark. A small dream that started in the North Ward has broken down barriers and borders bringing together youth from all parts of the city to be a part of what so many supporters have coined the phrase as the movement. Right. Boys and girls now from ages 5 to 15 can join and remain in our program over the years, and we have established a pipeline okay. with Barringer High School for future athletes. And Coach Tyson is the head coach of Barringer Bears, has joined our organization as the vice president of football. We also have a commitment in relationships with Weekway and Shabazz High School, coaches in support of our program. Our mission is to improve the youth in Newark who, and has also driven us to build relations with other community organizations, such as utilizing the Omega Psi Phi fraternity, the mentorship program for young boys ages from grades, uh, from first grade all the way up until they graduate from high school. We work with the uh, Delta Sigma Theta sorority and the Delta Teens program that works with the men and women and getting them into going and getting into college. And we also work with the National Urban League, the supplemental education services provides to provide not just athletes, but to create future learners and leaders of our community. But with all these accomplishments and positive things that we are doing, and with the Brick Scene Alliance, we are still trying to establish our home field and practice field at school stadium. Ms. Sheila Pitts and Donna Jackson have joined in the coordination process of making sure that we have our field for this season. But today we come before you to ask that as we present to you our $48,000 budget for this, for this season, uh, that like in the past support you have given to other football leagues in the city, that you include funding to our organization as well. We are asking that funding be given to offset our $8,000 bus transportation expense. This funding we are not requesting from one single ward, but from the whole city council. We have acquired quotes from two bus companies in Newark, New Jersey, and have a bid that we would ask the city of Newark to obtain. This expense will provide transportation for our team, our football teams, and cheerleaders to all of our away, away games for this season. The benefit of this for the city of Newark will cover the expenses that all the parents will have to pay $50 for a transportation fee. So with your help, we can eliminate that. <laughs> In closing, we need your support, taking this team to another level. We assert that within one year of support, we will prove that we can effectively manage our league, represent Newark correctly, and provide an opportunity for all children to recognize their potential, gain confidence, acquire love for athletics, and understand the importance of education as they become great student athletes. We request expenditures to be made directly to the vendor to ensure proper use of funds and financial transparency. As a part of continued partnership, we would like to include you as official member of the Brick City Alliance. We have t-shirts for you, we have included our budget for you, and our quotes that, uh, that they're going to hand, if, if we're allowed to approach the podium, we'd like to give to you while we're here. Oh, they already have? Okay, sorry about that. The and clerk, we'd like to... The clerk's office. Where's, Come into the where's the well, so we're hoping that we, we, are, we believe that they all will help us out, so we're giving them to everyone. So we have, we also are providing tickets to our fundraiser, breakfast June 9th at Applebee's in Newark from 8 to 10. 
and to the citizens of Newark, we encourage you to go to BrickCityLions.com and also be a part of our movement and our upcoming fundraisers and register your youth from ages 5 to 15 in our football and Chilean program and be a part of our movement. We thank you in advance for your consideration and request to our proposal for our transportation fees. Thank you, sir. Uh, and you, you are your South Ward resident? Excuse me? You're a South Ward resident? Yes, yes. 71 Crawford Street. Okay. But what we, what we would like to do is perhaps make a motion that we can, uh, towards the bus fees that we're, we're asking for before we can leave off here. Okay. Um, Council I, I, Yeah, so uh, Mike James didn't come before the uh, council yet. We asked him to. I don't know what happened with that when we were supposed to be talking about the, the Pop Warner. We asked that he come before us. I mean, Jamil has been up here almost every meeting asking about the receipts. And then at that meeting, I asked, could he come and make a presentation before the council? And I don't think that that has happened. Um, because this, this brother here is asking for money for the council to do the football program. We give $80,000 to Pot Warner. That's not accounted for. So, well, at least it's being said that's not accounted for. So I would like to give him an opportunity to account for it. And then we can have a discussion about what we need to do. I mean, the South Ward has its own Jackie Robinson uh, Bears that's also in North Jersey Pot Warner as well. And I think that that's about to be a trend in a minute. So we need to, you know, begin to at least have a discussion around what is the future that the, the city is going to, or the council is going to have, relationship is going to have with us and Pop Warner or, or anything else, and how do we move forward from there? But that has to begin with Mike James being present. Absolutely. Where do we, where do we stand in terms well, of that? What, what, what well, Councilman, the, we've, we've had the administration, uh, Neighborhood Recreational Services came in and they did a presentation. They've also provided the, the invoices that were requested. So, well, so <coughs> you, you have those? We, we gave all of the councilmen a copy of that at the last say, meeting. I, I, didn't, I, didn't that. I can give you another copy. Office. We'll give you another copy, sir. So we, we provided the receipts. Um, if you want Mr. James to come, we'll Yeah, we'll Tuesday. Tuesday. Tuesday, invite him. Neighborhood Recreational Services. That time when I left early, that Mike was when James. They, did they come that day and talk about the last special they came? Yes. They, yeah. But we'll we'll have them come we'll come bring them back again. So, Councilman Rice. Yes, yeah, so I I was just a little confused. Um are, are you looking for the, the council to, to basically give you the dollars for the buses, the, the what's remained the ten thousand? Uh Yes, sir, and, and I'm also asking that, you know, we are, as you know, we are separate from Mike James, that we're, we're asking that you assist us in funding our transportation fees. We're going off to Bergen County, right. no, Montclair, so we're going off to different places that we like some type of donation towards our expenses. So I think, I think so, so, so like, Councilman Barack and the Council President are correct in, in that Mike James is the person we got to get to say yes or no because it's a Pop Warner affiliated event and that's a city thing. But, but the other piece is the council itself doesn't have a recreation fund that we give directly out. We can reimburse you for expenses. Point of, point of, uh, point of correction that we are not part of Newark Pop Warner or under the umbrella of uh, no, 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 Mike I'm, James. I'm not saying that you are, but I'm saying you, you, are, you are trying to include members you have members from the North Jersey Pop Warner League and the North Jersey Pop Warner that are, that are, that are affiliated with your program, though, correct? Yes, but, okay. but separate from Newark Pop Warner, there's two, two no, different... No, I, I understand that. I understand that. But my, my, my point is, is that... There's duplication of services. Yeah, exactly. So I'm saying that like, there's a city department that can, that can help find funding for you. Mm -hmm. The council in and of itself, we, don't, we have recreation budgets mm -hmm. to a certain level that we can reimburse you for expenses. Yeah. That's how the council can give dollars going forward. Yeah. We can't write a check for you from any member here. That, I just want to make sure you're clear about yes, that. Yes, sir. Okay, I, okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. So moving forward, um, how, how can we uh, follow up with this? Well, we're going to have to have an internal discussion with um, Mr. James in reference to Newark Pop Warner because, uh, as I hear Councilman Baraka said, that 
more people are trending towards the organization that you're involved with. Mm -hmm. And we as a city are going to have to make a decision because we're not going to be able to fund both. Uh, we can't do so, both. So we're going we're gonna to have to uh, have some serious <laughs> conversations in reference to Newark Pop Warner and the group that you're involved with and make a decision, uh, you know, as, as a city on which way we move. Okay, and I, we would appreciate that, but we also know that uh, the, <coughs> the South uh, Bears did also see grant funding and, and any uh, other funding that we can get to, to help assist us, though we're not asking for it to, to total our whole operating budget, right. that any money that can go to that, we would ask that we look into that as, that as well. Yeah, well, I, I think um, uh, you have a good, you know, you have a good model in the South Ward organization yeah. and, and should, you know, probably use the best practices and, and um, you know, go after the same means that they are, so. We, we, asked, we asked Bartlett, which is a, a, a corporation over in the South, they gave, <coughs> they gave money to the Jersey, the uh, uh, Jackie Robinson Fish. organization mm -hmm. for us. Right. We, we asked them to give money and they gave money to the Jackie Robinson uh, organization. So something similar could happen right. uh, for you guys as well. You know, these businesses and corporations come into our city mm -hmm. to begin to get them to, even uh, the Prudential Arena, they, you know, get them, you know, <laughs> to give up some money for organizations like that, you know. Okay. So it, it's possible for that to happen, definitely. Okay. So I hope we could talk sidebar maybe yeah. at another time to, to yeah. get that rolling. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Jamal Jackson. Good evening, City Council. Good evening. Good evening. Um, my name is Jamal Jackson. I live 73 Longfellow Avenue, Newark, New Jersey, 07106. Um, I've been a resident of the city for 41 years. Uh, I've been coaching football here in the city of Newark for 17 years. Well, I've been coaching football for 17 years. Um, I started coaching in the West Ward, and I went to East Orange and started coaching in Central Jersey, Pop Warner, North Jersey, came, and I came back to Newark the last two years. Um, these last two years here in the city, coaching Pop Warner, um, from the, ve from the very first time that I've began in 95 to today, this last past season in 011, it's just been terrible. All right, I feel as though that the, the kids in the city is being disserviced with the, with the league. And it all starts, <clears throat> it all starts with the leadership. I just don't understand how can we have a league that is ran by individuals who really don't understand what it takes to run a league. You know, you just get the money and you do what you want to do, but you don't even listen to the people. You don't listen to the voices of the coaches. The coaches are the most important part of any athletic program or any type of athletic structure. It's the coaches that make it move. And we volunteer and we don't even have a voice. We have to come here to be heard. And I feel as though it is unfair. So a few of us, myself, Vernon Maynard, Nasir Gaines, Marcus Laws, Ms. Tasha, we all came together and we formed the Brick City Lions. Because we feel as though if it's free, we don't have a voice. And we didn't come here tonight to lean on the city for any handouts because we paying our own way. It costs $3,000 for us to take kids that's not our own kids, right? to put them in the league to play football in which they can get the exposure, they can get out the backyard, they can play a game and don't have to worry about when they shake hands will it, a riot break out or the referees fussing about, well, they have to get the money from the league president. 
I mean, some of these things here is just ridiculous. You have people that's been in leadership for over 20 years, man, and hasn't brought anything new to the, or to the league. How is it we the largest city in the state, okay? Everybody, think about it. Your number, <laughs> if you look, I don't know if you guys follow this, but you can go on NJ Varsity, okay? And you see the top five athletes in the state, right, are from Newark. That's right. And they don't even attend school here. That's right. That's right. My son is on that list right. in his class of 2013. He plays quarterback at Malcolm X Baz. He transferred from Don Bosco to come back home, right? But he left to go to Don Bosco because he was on a team in which a gentleman was coaching the team, right? Hasn't won, he's won nine, he's won, um, I'm sorry, six games in nine seasons. <laughs> so what happened to those kids' future? Do they, they don't deserve the opportunity to go to college? Yes, they do. And they can't because, like I said, the piss poor leadership. And nobody's not saying nothing. These young men, they graduated from school. It's no decent trade school around here. Right. Drake is not cutting it. Let's be for real. Drake ain't cutting it. You know, we want to get technical training. We got to go to Union County. But look at our jail, though. Our jail is the size of, the size of uh, Rutgers and NJIT. And now, we gonna, you know, I just heard you gentlemen say, we still trying to des decide on what we gonna do with the youth athletics as far as the Pop Warner. I don't think it need to be a decision. I think you already know what need to be done. Because our kids are leaving. They don't even have faith in the city. And that's sad. That's sad. Right now, we feel like we're the black sheep and we're not doing nothing wrong. <coughs> All we doing is trying to keep our babies home. Keep them home, raise them right, teach them how to be strong. They can get educated here. They can learn to play the game here. That's and right. they can grow and be prosperous here. But we need y'all help. I don't care if it's just if y'all just supply water. We need your help. That, I mean, you know, I don't know what else to say. Hmm. If we want to bring, if, listen, man. And you can go anywhere. We go in the South, we go in these small towns. What's the one thing they have in common? The one thing they have in common is sports. Everybody gonna come together if you a basketball town, you a football town, you a baseball town. People are there and they push and they support them kids. And what them kids come back and do? Them kids come back and, and sit here and reflect you. Because just like I'm here at the podium, you was here too. You might not have been standing here talking, but you was watching the thing. On, you was watching this broadcast on TV, or if not, Miss Jenkins from your block was here. How about the How about the barbershop conversations? We all go there and chop it up. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Something needs to be done. And anything y'all can help us with, we regret. We would gratefully appreciate it. And that's my time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker, Lamont Vaughn. Lamont Vaughn, non Horatio Court, Newark, New Jersey. Many things to talk about tonight, but I think I want to start off talking to the people in and of the city of Newark. I said it before and I'll say it again. There's only one solution to Cory Booker's pollution. One solution. We need to force this city council to vote no confidence in this mayor. Vote, put in a vote of no confidence in, in, in against this mayor and express the will and sentiment of the people in this city. That's the way we need to go, I think. Given the fact that he hasn't been listening to you all. 
He doesn't care about anything that you all have to say, to be honest. And you know what's crazy about this whole thing? You all know this. You know this. You sit in the meetings with him. Watch how he disrespects the people in and of this city. Intellectually explaining everything away. The people who are destroying this country, these states, these cities, and these counties are people like you all with suit and ties and degrees. Suit and ties and degrees. You guys are running this nation to hell. From Washington back home. Seriously. So, residents of the city of Newark, it is incumbent upon us to draw the line. It's either we're going to stand with the people and against the status quo, or we're going to stand with more of the same and against the people. And we need to begin marking our leaders. Follow the way Amador votes. He said he wants to disband the watershed. Well, why did you abstain from disbanding it? Vote to disband it. You know what they're doing. They've refused to submit to your power. The power of you legislators who gave them power. They took our power from you all, ran with it and said to hell with your power and our power. And you abstained? I mean, this is just, you know, it's crazy to me. But we got to hold these people accountable. Elections are coming up. They're going to be knocking on your doors. Senior citizens, they know that you're the most loyal base that comes out and vote. They know that. And they bank on you getting up out of your bed, going to vote. Vote right this time. Study the issues. Study these leaders. Study their voting record. See what they're voting for. See what they're voting against. Watch who they're talking to. Watch who they're associates with. All of that. Don't just vote anymore for a piece of chicken, a bus ride, some t-shirts, photo ops and all of that. We can't do it no more. They're selling our city out and we'll have no future here. Now, there's something interesting here about that happened in New Orleans after Katrina that I want to talk about here for a second. They said the first or well, one of the first people inside of New Orleans while people were still sinking in the damn water was Donald Trump. And he was there to meet the Oreo in power, Ray Nagin, who looks like Cory Booker, by the way. <laughs> and they were talking about gentrifying the black community there and bringing Donald Trump's business to take the place of residential areas. That's gentrification. That's what you call using cause or, 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 or the, the, the effects, rather, of a cause, using the effects to do what you want done, to do what other people want done, and that's what they're doing here. And you all, some of you, have bought into it. Mr. Gonzalez, Mr. Amador, Ms. Trump, she got backed up out of it. Thank God. I pray that y'all come out of it. Mr. Rice, you, you working toward it? Come on. Darren, you said you ain't with it? Come on. 
I haven't heard any more about what they did to your father. Why? Has it been, re you brought it to the public? You should have told the public what the resolve was. We deserve that. And all we're asking is for you guys to get in, and I'm done with this, not fight for your own personal enrichment, that of your family, nepotism and all that. No, get in, do right by your people. I'm not saying don't, but don't forget the little people who ain't got nothing, ain't had nothing. Think about some of them. Walk up and down Avon and Broad Street, wherever, and snatch your brother up sometime and say, come on, we about to put you to work. Do that. And maybe, just maybe, man, you guys could turn the sentiment of this city in you all's favor. But right now, it looks like, man, Booker's winning the day, and you guys are helping. That's called aiding and abetting. So when we're out of a future here, you all have helped him put us out of that future. And I thank y'all. Good night. Thank you. Clerk, next speaker. Atari Denisha Williams. Oh, boy. Good evening to the council, to the family and friends. My name is Hatari Danisha Williams. And up, I'm up here on the behalf of Flagwell. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna read about their mission statement and then the history and then I'm gonna flip the script. Um, Flagwell, their mission statement is, the purpose of this organization is to establish hands-on building skills through the training programs tar targeting unemployment individuals and in North seeking unemployment. Flagwell recognized the need to develop economic stability in North communities. With that in mind, the Flagwell has developed a model concept fueled by the urgent need to take back the streets of North. Flag World's mission in the city of Newark is to create jobs and to make Newark a working class city again. Flag World's model of pro simply states, save Newark. The history. On February 3rd, 2004, Mr. Joseph and Stephen Flagg founded Flag World Construction Company as a general contractor and a subcontractor. As we expanded in the state of New Jersey and the city of Newark, our vision became of that nonprofit organization geared towards addressing the urgent unemployment problems and facing North. We intend to use our resources to create jobs and raise the unemployment rate through the various connections using constructive business minimums and we can put the citizens of North back to work off public assistance and unemployment. Also, um, so the best of my knowledge, I've heard of them working with Raz Baraka on some Wednesdays, but they were also telling me that they needed garbage bags, supplies, rakes, brooms, whatever they need. And they're working with him, and that's just one ward. They also are willing to work with the rest of the wards to help clean the communities, and I agree with that. I've sat in here, and this is my first time up here. Um, you have various nonprofits. You know, I'm part of Occupy Newark. I'm part of the Newark Anti Violence Coalition. I'm also a member of the New Black Panther Party. And to me, I sit in here and I'm also at home and I listen and I watch this thing and I'm like, all you hear is yes. Yes. That's like the favorite word for this, this thing here. And I'm like, you have nonprofits that come begging y'all to help y'all. And we all, all we get is no, or we don't even get an answer. I came to um, Darren Sharif's office and I asked in reference to adopting lots. I've seen them on the streets, I have the same thing, and that was months ago. And I heard Councilman Rice say something about adopting lots. I have a problem with that because I haven't got a phone call yet. So I'm, I'm waiting on my phone call, Darren Sharif. Um, also, for my seniors, I got a heart for my seniors. I'm hungry, I know they are hungry too. Yesterday I witnessed on Brantford and Halsey Street, there was an accident with a senior, she was in a wheelchair, 
and her wheelchair was underneath the, um, the front fender of the car and her leg as well. Now, I work right there as well, and it's like always two or 50 cops on that one block. It took them five minutes to get there, and the citizens had to get this female from underneath this car. What's going on? We need to do something about our citizens. These, the citizens is the root, and we are the branches that fall from that root. So we need to wake up and, and, and do something about this. I hear them complaining all the time about how they can't get up the roads because there's no way for them to get up there. They can't go shopping because they can't fit inside the markets. You have nonprofits that is willing to help these people. Let's get the job done. Let's stop complaining about things that we can do in the city as a whole. Payne, I came to you several times talking to you about Occupy Nook. Y'all just, y'all just threw us out of the wind. It wasn't about occupying that park because I turned that into a nonprofit and I'm willing to occupy Nook, not just then, but every day. But I need the help from the council. We need the help. If, if y'all can, if y'all can set up a meeting with different organizations that's nonprofits out of the city of Newark and see if we could come up with an agreement to keep this place clean and to get jobs going in here instead of us throwing it all the way to West Bubble and giving it to them. We need that money here in the city. You got kids that's coming out of high school, graduating, and now you find them leaning and rocking and pilling and surfing it up because they don't have nowhere to go get a job after they come out of high school. You got people coming out of, graduating out of the colleges with degrees and they getting pilled up too and they don't have nothing to do with their life because y'all giving all the money to other places. We need that money to stay here in the city. Thank you. President. Council, Council President. Thank you very much. Councilman uh, Rice and then Sharif. Yeah, uh, Tari, uh, thank you for coming. But, but I always try to tell people, how, how long have you been working with Flag World right now? How, how long have you been working with Flag World? Well, that's like a new organization that I like briefed in because I moved to the South Ward. I've been right. with them now like almost over, probably like four months. Okay. But it's like certain things that I see I know, that I know, they I, do, I, I, I approve. I'm, I'm with you. So, so, so let me give you a little history about Flag World because mm -hmm. you challenged some of us up here. The first place Flag World worked was in the West Ward. Okay. Uh, and the first place Stephen Flagg called his headquarters was in my little city hall on 18th Avenue. And so we were supporters of theirs before they even came up with a citywide plan of where they wanted to work. Okay. They were thrown out of a place in the South Ward Trump. and needed a place to be at, and they came to our ward and we helped them out. Remember. Stephen Flagg will, will, will justify that. The, the key is, is you're exactly right. More needs to get done. But we also got to give a little credit to some folks who do work with grassroots folks, even when they don't give them, have the money in their pocket, they find the dollars and resources to get to them in order to do the job they need to get done, to move them next step forward further. And, right. so, and so all I'm saying is you're 100% right. More has to get done, more nonprofits who really do the work or to get those dollars. But what we have to commit ourselves to doing, what those organizations have to commit themselves to doing as well, is getting to that level of capacity Mm -hmm. so that they can qualify for certain things. We had a nice meeting uh, that, that uh, Bashir Akinelli and his wife sponsored at Westside High School about grassroots organizations who don't get the dollars they're supposed to get done in, you know, in order to compete. And Mutume was there, a number of people were there. The key was I promised that I would have, before the summer was out, a, 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 a sit down with all those groups to, to match them with the resources and what they have to do to get those kind of resources so they can be competitive and actually compete for them for reentry jobs, for, for CDBG monies, for all those kind of dollars, NSP dollars you mentioned. Those kind of dollars go, have a set criteria of state and federal things that we have nothing to do with, but we do have a responsibility to get those organizations to be able to compete for those, and I agree with you there. Right, so people like me that I have two nonprofits and I really don't want to pull them off the ground like that because I don't know everything that you just talked about. We, we're going to do that over the summer, I promise you that. I promise right, you that. I don't want to go out there and jump the gun and be like some of the rest of them that's supposed to be doing something and really not using that you. money for what it's worth. So if you guys can help me to do what I'm supposed to do to understand how the nonprofit works in the right manner, then I will be willing to bring them up because my ideas is like out of the roof and I can't do this by myself. I'm only right. one individual. Okay, Council, Council, Council President. Sharif. Mr. President. Uh, Count, Atari. I'm You're next. Um, Sharif then Amador. I'll, tomorrow I will um, follow up immediately. I'm disappointed that somebody from my office didn't get back to you regarding the adopt the lot. 
um, the first lot that we adopted. It's on the corner of um, Broad Street and Clark Street. It's um, 10,000 square feet, and we partner with the Greater Newark Conservancy, Rutgers University, the Greater Newark Charter School, and um, excuse me. And and through the um, uh, contribution from a developer, they put in between um, 10 and 15 thousand dollars to level it out to prepare it so that uh, we could build on it. Uh, we're working with Nikki Singletary now. She's identified a lot. But what we created with that first adopt the lot really was a model so that subsequent lots wouldn't have to start from the beginning. They could build on and benefit from the experience uh, from the first lot. Um, the um, partners in the first adopt the lot project, it is um, um, the school, the neighborhood, and um, a developer. And I want to work with you to provide the same resource to that. But I want to respond to um, Lamont um, Vaughn. There is no, Lamont, there's not a single day that I wake up that I don't think of a partnership that I could do to provide a benefit that you could measure. It's one thing to talk about um, what you want to do, but it's another thing to be able to talk about it, to build a program that you could measure from the um, parents that we work with at um, Science Park who were faced, their kids started out in the seventh grade last year. Their eighth grade now um, through a decision that um, Cammie Anderson made that all eighth graders had to take the ACT Explorer and that based on their score, they might not be able to return. Um, I met with them every Saturday night at one of the parents' house. We worked out a situation. We negotiated a settlement um, with the superintendent so all of those, God, we, we stuck that midnight. <laughs> Council so, Amador. So I, so I, Council President, Council President, Council President, Council President, Council President. All the, all the please. President. So Council President. So I, I respect every single person that comes to this podium. But if you come to make a cheap shot and not are prepared to listen to a response then it really is an indication of what your true motives are as opposed to asking a question and hearing an answer. And, and many of the people, many of the people, Carter, please. many of the people who come here, right, and criticize what we do, and I'm old and I'm big enough. Council President. Council President. Sir. Council President. All right. Council President. No, no, I want to finish this. I want to finish it. I want to finish it. Right? So, so there's not a single person that I've interrupted when they've tried to state what are legitimate concerns. But when I try to give a direct response, not to be respectful enough to hear what the response is, even if you disagree, then it's unfortunate. Thank you, Council President. Excuse me, Councilman Amador. Councilman Amador. Just, just for the record, since the speaker did not um, state that, I have used Flag World about three times, and they have received from me about $5,000 so far. Next speaker. You should make an announcement there. Louis Shockley. Louis Shockley, 45 Rose Terrace. Uh, I hope I, uh, I want to go over a few things real quick. Uh, there's a senior in the audience, and this will connect to what I'm going to follow up with. This is from the county of Essex from uh, Joe D, and this is about the buses. Now they want our seniors to pay $10 a month for buses. Channel 5. The other night just did a thing with Joe D and with CWA and see this goes back to what we're saying earlier. Total back zoo, bunch of money spent. Eight million dollars spent on a restaurant, county money. We got money to pay people's back mortgages back up there in the county. Not in Newark. We can't pay one month of rent in Newark, but we can pay six months for somebody up in Glen Ridge or Verona and stuff like this. It, you know, it's, it's just sad. Uh, just real quick also, before I get into the meat of the argument, here we go again. You guys had a private meeting, didn't invite uh, uh, Bonnie Watson and them. 
by Douglas Harrison. See, so when people come up here and you say that you don't miss this and you don't miss that, as my mother used to say, everybody can't be lying on you, bro. Everybody ain't lying. Now, I will say maybe there's a couple of inaccuracies here and there, but every time, every time, and see, I'm here mostly a lot, and I see who's here. I know who's in the office, who not. I don't see half the staff that should be here. I just don't see them. Now, let's get to the meat of what I wanted to say. June 5th primary is coming up. You can do what you want. You can say what you want. You clowns can go out here and do whatever you want to do. I feel like I'm in the bloody twilight zone. Washington can get rid of Fenty. Orange can get rid of their mayor. Everybody can clean house, but you guys. I mean, I watched everybody. Oh, I'm, I'm just so disgusted with this guy and these groups. And blah, 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 blah. Even if you didn't care nothing about Cliff Minor, there was eight other people running, and you only pick one? You are a fool. I hate to say that, but you crazy. You crazy. You want to send one of these guys to Washington? Are you kidding me? They can't do nothing with this man on the second floor. What are they going to do when their Democratic colleagues push up on them in Washington? What are they going to do when the President Barack Obama push up on them? I'm going to vote for Obama, but guess what? I got problems with Arnie Duncan, who runs the Secretary of Education, because that's where this stuff is coming from. Ain't nothing in chat, no, no child left behind talking about closing school. Read it yourself. This is a hedge fund thing that, that Arnie Duncan is connected with those people in Chicago with. 17 schools in Chicago, 24 in New York. Call your family members from coast to coast. I guarantee you, every black city is happening all over the country. What are you, crazy? You didn't see that little freak snowstorm? See, I got white friends. They told me, oh, Lou, man, I ain't had power in a month and a half. What you think you ain't, what you gonna do when you ain't got no power? You gotta go get a generator. Tell me the last time something went out in Newark and you didn't get back on five hours. When it flood in the hood, you good. But when it flooding out there, you done. Month, two months, all this kind of stuff. They wanna come back to these cities. We've been blessed. We haven't had a, main, a, a water main break in this town. It's due, we talked about it, it's coming. But guess what? Look at all the other towns around you. They popping like, 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 like corks off of soda pop. Pop, pop, pop. You still good here. This is one of the best found fundamentally built cities in the nation. Are you kidding me? You don't know the history of this town. You ain't studied it. And you're going to let these people take it away from you. Real quick, I know I'm running out of time, but I just got to read this. Donald Payne Jr., he fought to bring new jobs and businesses, including Health First and Panasonic. I didn't know he did that. Panasonic? I didn't know that. He created a major job training program for Newark residents in the city, uh, growing hospitality industry. I know Gail Cheneyfield was talking about doing that. I ain't seen it happen yet. Somebody know where that training center at? It's almost like those, it's almost like those solar panel companies. Where they at? Corey Towdy. Anybody seen them yet? Can you tell me where they at? You know, uh, and it just goes on. My seniors ain't being taken care of. I've been telling them for two years. Essex County Votech School on West Market. Free training. $200, $300 for books. Free. And you was here with all these people with the PLA today. And you wonder why you can't get jobs, because there's no training. Training's right there in your city. You ain't got to go to, she was going to say, uh, uh, West Bubble, you know what. But I ain't going to say it, okay? It's here. Then, Councilman Rice. Oh, my God. I got police officers who shouldn't be on the force. They're in there. It's just delivered to you another paperwork. Y'all all signed off. He still ain't back on the job. But we could pay Sergeant Lolly. Who molested children? Who stole drugs? Okay? You still got the report from Channel 12 News. 
you ain't did nothing with it. When Channel News and, and uh, the guy released that report, you should have sent it to the Attorney General. If they, if they won't give you what you need for subpoena power, take it to the Attorney General. He got it. He got subpoena power, but you don't want to do that. See, this all games. And y'all got to stop playing with the game, folks. I love all my brothers. I love all human beings. This ain't personal. This is business. I don't shop down here. Why am I going to give my money to an app who don't live here, don't care about me? Why am I going to give my money to all these folks? They about to send your money. They getting ready to send your money, bring in two people from Axion, a temporary agency. They just got $550,000. They got money for everything and everybody, Wrap but none up. for you. Wrap it up, sir. None for you or your kids. Now, let me tell you something. Nina Gill fought against health care and pension reform down there. She was on the front line. I'm sorry. I'm done with the men. Who, who, is, who are the most voters in this town? Women. Y'all vote. We don't. I'm sorry. Until I see a stand-up man, if, Barack, if President Obama would listen to his wife, Michelle, he'd be in a lot better shape, I bet you. Wrap it up, sir. I bet you. Thank you. That's why they scared of her. She's strong black sisters, like most of our strong black sisters are. But we got these people, and we following them, Thank and you. we letting them lead us off the cliff. The last Thank thing you. I will give you is introducing Newark Prep and Spirit Prep. Now they don't even want your kids to go to school. They want them to do it on the Internet. Thank you. They don't even want me to go to school. And they're going to put this in your town. And lastly, and I'm out, go over and check William Street over there at William and, and uh, Halsey. They got three floors of steel already done for Teacher Village. White folks can get affordable housing. Black folks, $1,200. Mr. President, I'm going to address this. Hmm. Councilman Rice. Yeah. You said correct inaccuracies. I'm going to correct at least one inaccuracy. News 12 based their story on information I gave them. The ACLU came in here and, and would join us to get the feds to come in and investigate the police here. The only investigation ever done by a city council into any department was done by this councilman and this council person who sit on this, on this here. So my point is this. 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 The feds came in here because of what we did. The ACLU joined us because of what I did. And the News 12 that you referred to got their background information from what we right. provided to them. Thank you. And, and look. And we got Darren Nance's pay. And we got Darren Nance's pay. All right, okay. All right, Lou. All right, Lou. This is Shockley. All right. Lou. All right. And, Le and, and Lewis. And Mr. Shockley. Mr. Shockley. Lamont. All right, excuse us. We have a resident, we have a resident at the mic. We have a resident at the mic. Show the ladies some respect, please. My name is Juliet Grant. I live at 54 Isabella Avenue in the city of Newark you, and the West Ward. And I am a senior citizen. I'm 79 years old, and I am appalled at a letter that I received which uh, didn't even have the decency to uh, put my name on it. It says, Dear Ryder, and it's from Joe DiVincio, county executive, and your other council colleague up there, Annabelle Ramos, Jr., department director, and Jacqueline DeVore, division director. I spoke at the freeholders meeting two weeks ago yes. and got no response. You, sir, didn't even look at me. I'm talking to Mr. Payne, okay? 
My topic is concerning this communication. I am appalled at this dear letter, and I have sense enough to know, and I am a college graduate, that this is a suggested donation, but I am appalled at it. This letter states that you want senior citizens to donate $10 per month for transportation, which will be about $120 a year. I'm against it. It is a hardship. I have no intentions on giving you $10. And the other thing is, this transportation is not for leisure. It's not for recreation. It's for medical health care for older citizens in Essex County, such as physical therapy, health care, mental health consultation, high blood pressure management, eye and dental care, private doctors and appointments to hospitals, Beth Israel, UMDNJ, East Orange General Hospital. Some of our seniors are experiencing dementia, Alzheimer's and loss of memory cannot afford to pay a taxi fare to the doctor's office or the hospital. This voluntary solicitation from each senior citizen in Essex County is a hardship, $10 per month. Our senior citizen population is, a, is existing on monthly fixed income, Social Security, and some have retirement. Myself, I don't have retirement. Some seniors do not receive pension checks. Therefore, this selection of a donation will cause a hardship. Seniors who are afraid, if they don't give the $10, they won't be able to go to the doctor. And Mr. Ramos, before he left, had the audacity to say that I didn't have to give the money. Well, then one of y'all should give it for me because I'm not going to give it. Also, this letter intimidated seniors, and they're afraid to come out to the meeting. They don't know what's going to happen. The service is not that good. The buses are inconvenient, and there's a lot of problems with the program. This program is funded from the Older Americans Act, the Casino Revenue, Social Services Block Grant, and statewide residence program intended to uh, uh, help disabled individuals. Senior citizens are being targeted and the individuals with the greatest social and economic needs. This program has a lot of problems with the existing transportation buses, which in some times are very inconvenient. You have to wait anywhere from an hour to two hours to come back home from the doctor. Most of the buses are very uncomfortable and limit handicapped people such as myself from getting up on the bus and walking away. Uh, this communication was in very bad taste and we are the people who voted y'all in office. We are a consistent a group of people that vote in every election. And you all know that because you come to us asking for votes. I worked in the senior citizen building, and by 11 o'clock, most of those seniors have already came down and voted. And then when the election comes up, you'll still be looking for seniors to vote. I got correspondence this week from you, Mr. Payne, asking for my vote, just like the gentleman just spoke on it. But when I came to the Board of Freeholders, you didn't even respond. Nobody said nothing. You just looked at me as though I came from the moon. And that was it. You're treating us as second and third class citizens. Most of our seniors are affected by this program and taxes. And these are the people that you seek your votes from. Sharif, uh, Ron Rice, Donald Payne, Quintana, Mildred Crum, this gentleman here, Raz Baraka, and Amador. You all look to us for votes. Now find out why we got to give this organization $10 to take us to the doctor. We're not going to the prune, and we're not going out borrowing. We want to know. I'm not going to pay it. You've intimidated the seniors already, and they're afraid to speak. I spoke to a few of them. 
They were afraid to come down here tonight. Some of them have already sent the ten dollars in. I'm not sending one dime in, and I better get my appointment to go to the doctor. And I am fed up with misuse of senior citizens. And you know I don't come down here, but I have had it. My cup has run over, and I ain't gonna take it no more. That's right. I got it. I got it. Ms. Grant, Chisholm. Miss, excuse me, Miss Grant, Miss Grant, first, first let me apologize for you thinking that I did not pay attention to you at the freeholder meeting. Uh, the presentation that you just made is the presentation you made at the freeholder board. No, it's a different one. I wrote a different uh, speech. No, actually, I, I'm actually, a college graduate. I, I didn't understand. present the same speech. Well, it, it, it has the same information in it that you gave okay. at the freeholder board, okay? And let me just apologize if you felt that I was not paying attention. That, is an that was an administration decision by Joe DiVincenzo, but the freeholder board has not approved it or not voted on it, and we are not for it. So I just want to make that clear that you have to separate the county executive from the freeholder board. And the presentation that you made to us was the first time a lot of us were hearing about this new policy. So we're moving forward in support of the senior citizens. So you will not, you will not get the same. It's the letter that everybody that, wanted. It was something that we did not vote on yet. And it's something that the majority of the freeholder board I know was surprised, dismayed, and are not in favor of. So I agree with you, you should not pay it. That is a service to you as a county resident. And this new uh, implementation of a fee was something that we did not realize, and I don't think you should pay it. Councilwoman Crump. Thank you, um, Mr. President. Ms. Grant, I am absolutely delighted to see you um, for those of you who don't know who this lady is, who are, I, I just said, for those of you who don't know who this lady is uh, and how she could speak with such fire and determination, um, this is the first African-American woman to seriously run for the Newark City Council. Her name is Juliet Grant. We started in 1978. <laughs> That's how long ago it was. Unfortunately, um, we learned, and then did it again in 82, uh, we learned, unfortunately, from that experience that uh, it takes money uh, and also respect for women. It did not exist at that time, but she was an incredible candidate, and I stand, I sit here on her shoulders. So I just wanted to acknowledge that. Um, uh, so I'm glad to hear you. So now you know why she could do this with such ease. Uh, I too um, received a copy of the letter. I immediately called <coughs> Ms. DeVore uh, because I knew she was the first level. Uh, you are right, you do not have to pay. My question to her, why are you sending this out now? Um, I, I, as the president said, it was an administrative decision and so I have reported to all members of the Senior Citizens Committee for the City of Newark uh, that you do not have to pay. Ms. DeVore and I had a very serious conversation mm -hmm. um, and uh, so good for you. You know, number one for standing up for your rights. You are absolutely correct. This is not uh, a trip to the movies. It's not a shopping trip, but it's a trip that uh, you're required, that you need for uh, services, medical services. And so I thought it was a bit much that they um, felt that they could just 
put this on us and nobody would say something. But surprise, surprise, the seniors have been rising up saying, oh, heck to the no, uh, we're not going to do this. So thank you for bringing it to Newark, um, to the attention of Newark residents, uh, that they do not have to pay. It is not mandatory and good. Okay. Thank you. Well, the letter was in intimidating. It was. And it looked like a quack letter. I almost put it in the garbage. It didn't even have a self-address or where it came from. Just to show you the insensitivity of Joe DeVincio and them people up there on High Street. And I am totally app appalled against this. Yes, you are. <laughs> and you. I will fight to my dying day, but I'm not paying one cent, not one. I have a ton of <laughs> Councilman Rice. I, need to you know, I, I don't, I don't even want to. Uh, I don't need to repeat um, what the councilwoman said. I just, I'm just glad that. Basically, it's ditto what the councilwoman said. I support exactly what she said to do. Um, what I'm going to ask is that this policy, even if it's a suggested policy, be never communicated to any seniors anymore going forward. And my hope is that we'll be able to convey that not only to Jacqueline, but also to Anibal Ramos, who sits to the right of me. We'll make sure this never goes out again. And if it does, we need to make sure the county comes before this body. I'm done. See you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, man. Thank you very kind. Thank you. Afternoon. Next speaker. Earl I'm Best gone. Street Doctor. Mr. President. Uh, Earl Street Doctor Best, 53 Osborne Terrace, New, New Jersey. Um, no, 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 no problem because I want to piggyback off that. I ain't never been up this late. But um, anyway, very briefly, so I can get on out of here. This is. Um, Good evening, council, everybody up on the, on, um, the pulpit. Um, real quick, this is, I'm hoping this is not no deja vu. This is the second time I came here with the senior citizen. The last time I was here, they was having a problem at this place where some rich billionaire was messing with them. I gave my phone number up. I said I wasn't waiting until uh, 4,000, whenever the next mayor thing was. So I said, you know, I ain't going to wait. I'm going to be mayor, so I, again, so now I got to be mayor again, I ain't going to wait. My number is 973-600-0877. Now, you can't smile with this because God work in mysterious ways. Now, we done seen a lot of places now where people ain't have no money. I ain't got no money, and they won. So don't, don't get this twisted because while y'all playing games, the street doctor is moving. See, I got the streets. I got the jails. Oh, you didn't know that they can vote? You're talking about thousands. See, I already done did the research on the politics. I mean, my bad, politics. So I done found out that this game is about numbers. I got the numbers. So when you call me and to these geeks, to the geeks that don't know me, let me introduce myself. They call it throw on the rock and hide your hand. So I did some research on that. That came from an older person. Not this generation, not the generation, my generation, but the generation from slavery. Because they were so slick, and I'm talking about in a positive way. They played drums to communicate. They did movements. What do you think when they do the, the thing, uh, when they do the thing where they selling stuff? Uh, going for five, 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 ten, twenty, twenty. All that came to auction. Guy wiggle his ears. People don't know. Another guy hit his hand. I want that. Another dude to call. <laughs> Them signs. They call it psychology at its best. McDonald don't have to show you the hamburger. All they do is play the music and make y'all Negroes hungry. Nike don't have to show you the sneaker. These 30 second sound bites. I'm, I'm bringing this together today. Nike don't have to show you the product, which is the sneaker. All they do is kick in your behind and say, do it. So it goes on and on. So they say, you know what? Negroes is getting hip to that. So we got to take this to another level. So now you got all these people, you got to kiss their rings. You know right. what I'm talking about. Right. Yeah, I'll kiss it, I'll bite it off. Right. You see what I'm saying? You know, so you got all these backdoor deals. I'm telling you, this politics is so filthy. Yes. 
It is so filthy that it's worse than these kids out here on the corner. The only thing different between the ones on the corner and the ones in jail and the ones that where they pass down below their behind is that they're not sharp enough yet. But oh boy, one day they're going to wake up and they're going to come together. And when they come together, this is going to be a whole new ASIS. Right. Overnight. Overnight. Right. It's 86,400 seconds in a day. But now let me bring this on in. This week, May the 19th, which is said at 10 o'clock to 4 p.m., Mount Vernon Baptist Church is giving something for the youth. Now, the same day at 6 p.m. at night, Rutgers is doing something for the youth. And the reason why I brought that up because we, we need that. Now let me close out with the arena. Right here. See this is the kind of stuff you take pictures of. It says pay your rent. It says meet with the community. Let me break this down. About a week ago, no, about a month ago, um, the Honorable, you gotta give people respect. The Honorable Cory Booker, the mayor, until I take his place. What happened was, what he did was, he said, he said, um, I'll never go into that arena. Do y'all remember that? All right. Then I, if I'm wrong, correct me. Then he said, he's a Devils fan. See, this is the politics. Okay? But well, what happened was, what happened was, our group, we gone over to the guy. We was over there before. We, we revisited. And we went there today. You know, they planned for the cup. But we going to revisit. And we want to have... Uh, a conference, not no, no call in person, we want to have a conference with him about the community. Now, we don't want no mayor there, we don't want no governor there, we want the people from the hood there. To the people who don't know that language, right? Oh, I, like, I don't like that. No, we're going to get different organizations and we're going to sit down with the guy that owned the, um, the hockey thing. And we're going to sit down. And this is what we're asking for. Very briefly, I'm almost finished. This is what we're asking for. We're asking for more recreation centers, because they got it like that. We want to take these kids on trips. We want to get extra little money for them to work this summer, because I heard that we're running out of money. But they got the money. So if nothing don't happen, and then we'll be there like we did before, with the chains on the door, just the, um, I love you, Thurgood. Uh, um, uh, excuse me, please, please, please. This is very important. Y'all, yeah, I'm trying to talk to my ancestors. To the people who don't know what that is, right, get used to it. Frederick Douglass is talking to me now. They call it agitate. Excuse me. Yeah, because some Negro was doing something else. Say agitate. Agitate is, to the people who don't know, that's came from a washing machine. What you miss in the wash, you catch in the wrench. So the agitator is get the, the corner stuff that's in your drawers that the wash missed. So we agitators. We're the ones that go out, that hollers at the people that y'all afraid to do. That's why they say you throw the rock and you hide your hand. All we do in Newark is talk. But when it's time to go out and do action, I gotta close out with this. The Honorable Mildred Crump, I don't, she gone. She said something about, about the, uh, the hospital. Let me drop this and I'm out of here, uh, Councilman. Some time ago, and y'all know this, that sister right there, Donna, Cassandra, a couple other people, they said, you're always mentioning them. <laughs> Who else am I going to mention? They, they're always out there. And some other people. They the ones that went, I was with them, because I almost got locked up. We went in front of the um, UMD. That lady came up here and hollered that they was going to close that and got in a, almost got in a fight. Here we come. We revisited. No investigation, no right to speak. I call them, I say, what's going on? These people, we in Trenton, uh, we in Trenton. I said, what you doing in Trenton? He said, we in Trenton now talking to these people. They travel all over, all over. And they give the Norcas everything that's, whoever, and y'all, y'all can bear with me, so I'm gonna walk on this because I'm finished. Whoever, um, they call, what's y'all what name? Oh, New Jersey Monitor. That's them, right? They, if somebody spit, it's the best. and that, I said, I'm, I'm walking, I'm, no, brother, let me walk. I'm trying to walk. Yeah, if you get on that, if you spit, and the spit is, is a blow you up, they're going to let you know. 
because they ain't cowards. Some people say don't even text me no more because they cowards. Street. Throw the rock and hide your hand. Thank you. Next speaker, Thomas Ibing. E. Thomas Africa EBN, 175 First Street, Newark, New Jersey. Discovering himself, to be in the, discovering himself to be an oppressor may cause considerable anguish, but it does not necessarily lead to solidarity with the oppressed. Rationalizing his guilt through paternalistic treatment of the oppressed, all while holding them fast in position of dependence, will not do. Solidarity requires that one enter into the situation of those with whom one is solidary. It is a radical posture if what characterizes the oppressed is their subordination to the consciousness of the master, as Hegel affirms, true solidarity with the op oppressed means fighting at their side to transform the objective reality which has made them these beings for, one, for another. The oppressor is solidarity with the oppressed only when he stops regarding the oppressed as an abstract category and sees them as persons who have been unjustly dealt with deprived of their voice, cheated in the cell of their labor. When he stopped making pious, sentimental, and individualistic justice and risk an act of love, true solidarity is found only in the platitude of this act of love. In its extensuality, in its praxis, to affirm that men and women are persons and as persons should be free, and yet do nothing tangible to make this affirm affirmation a reality is a farce. That's what all of you do. You act like you care. You act like you understand my pain, but you don't know my pain. You don't feel my pain. You don't go home and eat oodles and noodles. I say this all the time. I look like I'm healthy. I look like I'm real good, but I'm really not good. I'm just fat because I've been eating all the crap in the hood. I go to the store, the store that y'all say y'all building to give out jobs, they won't give me a job because I'm a felon. But that's okay, I'm not gonna go into all of that. You could just see in what you people do. You, got, you have old people sitting up here, whining because you're not doing nothing. You have children whining because you're not doing nothing. What the hell y'all deserve your paychecks for? I do not belong to nobody up there. Nobody up there has ever put a penny in my pocket. So I could care less what I say to you because it's the truth. You get mad, you want to fight, see me outside. I don't care. Look, man, this weekend, I'm going to take the kids in the neighborhood to Neptune. I have to pay $390 for them to play in the AAU, AAU, AA League. Next weekend, I got to take them to um, somewhere down South Jersey. That's $350. The weekend after that, I got to take them somewhere else in the regionals for AAU. It is not about basketball. Every single kid on the basketball team is almost on the honor roll. But, it, but you know what? I can't slow down. I've been here for like five hours, dog. But it is what it is, though. Y'all don't have to do nothing up there. It's all incumbent on the people that's watching TV. They're the only people that could change this. Every single one of you up there has been bought and sold. We know that. Everybody in here know that. They know you don't belong to us. You belong to the companies. You told me you're going to call me. I went to your office. I told you I was broke. I had $10 to feed my family, and I had to decide on how to feed five people with $10. You gave me $5 with my daughter. Like, I don't, I don't even respect none of you. The first time I came up here, I was scared to talk. I was shaking. My voice was all stuttery. But right now, I have disdain for you people. I despise you people. Because the legacy that has been left, you people took that mantle and threw it out the window. Y'all threw it in the Hudson. But it's okay, though. It's getting hot outside. People suffering. They're going to come out. You know what happened to Mussolini, right? You people read and study. Go find out what they did to Mussolini. Go find out what's going on in France, in Italy, in Germany. It's okay. It's going to come to you. I mean, it's all right. Continue to do what you do, yeah? Because it's going to come to you. I don't even need five minutes. Next speaker, Laurie Gibson. Just for the record, though, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I don't belong to no corporation, just for the record, you know, I don't belong to, I belong to my own self, my mother and father, they was out there, God bless them. I don't belong to no corporation, nobody owns me or bought me, he said every one of y'all, I don't know if y'all want to defend yourself, but he, I'm not, I don't belong to nobody, I never did. And so, I'm going to tell you this, if you just came on the scene, um, Street Doctor says one thing, and that I, you know, that I, I said to him a while ago, and we repeated: no investigation, no right to speak. So, 
if you got something to say, make sure that you are clear on what you're talking about, right? So the first thing you read about uh, siding with the oppressor, I've never sided with the oppressor of no one. When, you know, Fidel Castro said, history will absolve me. So I'm perfectly okay with that. People, the, the great thing about democracy is that I don't have to agree with you ever. And so history will always absolve me because I'm on the side of the people all of the time. And if I make a, if, if, if I make a mistake, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix a mistake that I made personally and have the courage, have the courage to say I made a mistake and do so, right? So, but you don't have to, you don't have to agree with me ever. Um, at all, but um, we can struggle and, and argue about it and do whatever, but the, the problem that I have most of the time is the level of anger and venom. I understand why it's there. The problem is where is it directed, right? So we come in here and we direct this at each other when there are folks out there who are getting away with all of this stuff that's going on. Just like we had this argument in here, like I sat here and listened to all, of, to all the workers in here argue and watch the, the ruling class pit one worker against another worker and we all in here arguing and fighting each other when, when ultimately we all need jobs and employment, right? So the people who are gonna hire us all are not in this room, they're not gonna be here. They watch, they watch us argue with each other and we do probably need to argue and fight. But you know, there's a bathroom, there's some other places that we probably could go in meetings and argue and fight. But we should not be arguing and fighting in front of these folks who are trying to make us all unemployed. Right? So let's just be, I just want us to be clear on that. Just be clear. You don't have to agree with me in school. You don't have to agree with me. But, but what I'm telling you is that there are people who are making multi millions of dollars at the, at the reason that we're fighting and struggling with one another. Like, and, and that's just the facts. Like, nobody is going to Jeff Van Der Beek offering him to come outside and fight. Why are you going to come offer me to go outside and fight? As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, it wouldn't be no fight if I didn't go over there and fight Jeff Vanderbeek with you by your side. But you offer me to fight. Go offer Jeff Vanderbeek to fight. Go to Port Authority and offer those folks down there to fight. Go to the seaport and offer those people to come outside and fight them. Right. Offer those people to fight. Don't come ask me to fight. That's ridiculous. Actually, it's a coward move. It's a coward move, you know, because that's what we do to each other. We do that to each other. But offer other people to fight. Thank you. Next speaker, Laurie Gibson. Not appear. Craig Smith. Not appearing. Cassandra Dock. Appearing. Good evening, yes. Cassandra Dock, P.O. Box 25331, Newark, New Jersey, 07101. Uh, hopefully some of you did make phone calls, to, uh, as I asked you to two weeks ago, uh, to inquire about the $32 million, um, to see if we physically gotten that money. Um, and if you didn't, I did. Had a conference call on Monday with one of our senators from Essex County, who also put a representative from Department of Community Affairs on the phone. So I asked if we had gotten the $32 million, if we had gotten it physically. And so the uh, representative from DCA said we had gotten it. He said we got $24 million in December of 2011 and we got the remaining eight million in February of 2012. So I then asked them, I said, well, if that's the case, then why is the money in the budget that's gonna be voted on this year, which will be voted on before July 1st of this year? And so the senator, both the senator and the DC rep said to me, well, um, that's not uncommon. Um, and we put the money, in, we gave the money to Newark anticipating that it would be voted on. So I said to them, I said, you know, those two words right there, anticipated and uncommon. What I want to know is, is it legal? Because I can't see you vote, you, so in other words, you're saying, I'm going to give it to you, Newark, 
and hope that the senators and the assembly vote on it. I just want to know, is that legal? So both of them said to me, in other words, well, I don't know. You should call the Department of Treasury. I said, okay. And then, of course, I was pissed off at the senator who represents a part of Nora. Because I also said to that senator that that's a part of the MOU that includes the MUA. I said to that senator, of course, you know, we don't want it. We do not want an MUA. So then that senator said to me, and it's not Senator Rice, by the way. It was not Senator Rice. It was not. So that senator said to me, oh, so do you want the uh, representatives from Essex County to not vote on it, Cassandra? Well, yeah. Yeah. If we don't want the MUA, of course I don't want you to vote on it. So then I did call the Department of Treasury and um, explained, said the same things to them that I just said to you, and they said, I'll get back to you. So today is Wednesday and I'm still waiting because nobody got back to me to let me know whether or not this was legal. And then I consulted with my legal analyst who told me that a municipality taking a loan is illegal. That's what my legal analyst told me. So now, again, I'm waiting for uh, the Department of Treasury to get back to me. And I'm hoping that you guys would join me in calling them and asking them, is it legal? because we don't want to do anything illegal. Now, of course, you know I cannot come up here without closing talking about the congressional race. I have to talk about it. And I agree with you, Mr. Baraka, we should not fight. And that's why I'm so pissed at you, DP, because you causing us to fight here. <laughs> because we should not be fighting over this congressional seat. We should not be going through this. We should have to do this. And then I'm pissed because you don't even want it. You don't act like it. You don't walk like it. You don't talk like it. You don't want it. So I want Newark to understand this. A vote for you is a vote for Joe DiVincenzo. It is a vote for Steve Adubato. It is a vote for your Uncle Payne. So you are the train, as I said before, that they looking to ride them into DC. The problem is you, the you are the conductor. And the conductor cannot drive. And if the conductor cannot drive, of course, we all know what happens to the train. It derails. So that's my concern about this train. It's going to derail. And then secondly, I'm pissed because they all worked for that. All of them. You didn't win the first time, Raz. You remember your father got busted over the head, right? You remember your father called the convention with the Latinos and the blacks, right? For us to get a black mayor, right? And so we do have a black one, right? Shalom, shalom. And then we have a county executive, because I'm also mad at the Latinos, mad at y'all, because we have a county executive, Joe DiVincenzo, oh, oh, oh. Remember that, Phonics? Oh, oh. Steve Adaba, oh, oh, oh. So I know Jones. That's who's running this county. The Latinos and the blacks, Mr. Baraka, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, sir. So sorry, because I know we have embarrassed you. Because we're allowing a shalom, and we're allowing an Italian to run this, and they don't live here. And like I said, you all worked hard for it. Neep, Augie, really don't know your background too tough, but I know you ran with Sharp, so you won. Raz, like I said before, you didn't win at first. It took you a while to win, right? And then your parents made sure you went to school, right? You incurred some student loans, maybe, right? <laughs> Lou, you know, we love you. You in there. Nebo, I saw Nebo and Hector Cachado battling it out. Battling it out. Although Nebo was their choice for that North Ward. Steve, that was Steve's choice. But they battled. I saw Nebo debating Hector for that seat. They was going at it. Junior, you didn't win the first time. That's Ron Rice, Junior. You didn't win, you didn't win the first time. And your parents also made sure you went to college. You, you, you incurred some student loans probably, right? Damn, we disagree, but you are intelligent. You are. Parents sent you to college. You probably incurred some student loans as well, didn't you? But you, DP, you, you are my problem because I cannot allow my daughter, my three-year-old, to think that this is how it goes. That we send people there because of who they are, because of the legacy. You don't have no student loans, do you? Do you? You can't speak to that. 
So I want, you know what I want you to do? I want y'all to work this out because we should not be battling to each other. We should not be fighting over this congressional seat. And to you and to the person, and to the person that said somebody is scared of Nia, you're not scared of her. I dare somebody to tell me they know her because you don't know her. You don't know Nia and she don't know you. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, ladies, because I'm like you. We want a woman, but Miss Gills don't know you. So we're not scared of her. And Congress is about law and it's about rank. Miss Gill, you're beautiful, 63. It's about rank. So by the time you're probably down there, Miss Gills, it would take you a long time to get that rank. You're always talking about grooming, and we got to groom the next generation. Send him down there. He's young enough to go down there, groom him. And then also, DP, you love those children, don't you? You love your kids. If you think we're going to allow you to not be down in D.C., because I don't know who told you you don't have to be there. We'll handle it. Because you know, DP is nothing for me and my party to ride down to D.C. It's nothing. Four hours down, somebody do four hours back. Or we'll do two and two, change it to turnpike. We'll do it that way, because we're going to be there. Or I'll call my nieces from Howard and my nephews from Howard University. Go see us there. Go see us there. Because you're going to be there. So work it out. Check that $32 million and work this seat out. Because I am sick and we should be tired of Joe DiVincenzo and Mr. Adubato putting a foot on our neck. And I don't want to fight with you, son. I don't want to fight with you. I don't want to fight with you. One more thing, seniors, you cannot be confused. Wait, wait. We're we not already, the Black Democratic Party. We are the B Party, and we're not doing A all the way. It's a new day. We're going to do B. Hold it, did you hold it up, baby? Donald we're doing B four, and we're doing B five. There's no Black Democratic Party. Essex County Independent Democratic Party. Hey. That's B four, and that's B five. Okay. You already held I'm it done. up. Jeez. What, what you want? All right. I'm sorry. Thank you. Did that bell ring? Yes, it did. Next speaker, Donna Jackson. Appearing. <laughs> Street crazy. <laughs> Out of control. No, that's my part. Now I can follow that. She oh, can no. follow me. It Donna Jackson, one two eight Smith Street. Well, we keep not doing nothing. We keep on talking. Got a correction order for sir, murdered, right on Mulberry Street, right across the street from this building, right down the block. One still in critical condition. We got two officers shot at Club Sensations, security <laughs> officers, but they officers, nonetheless. All this in the last 48 hours. Still no red flags up. I know you don't put nothing up for the people in the community, but damn, for officers, can we say, huh, ooh, something's wrong. So I guess now life has no meaning in the city of Newark. Ain't got nothing to do with black, ain't got nothing to do with Latino, ain't got nothing to do with an officer. I guess we just don't give two dams about nobody. Because y'all not going to stand here tonight and tell me two officer shots on Mulberry Street and y'all ain't doing nothing, because you're not. We got two white women rode they dumb behinds in here to buy crack on Thomas Street. Rafiq and Pookie, because they didn't have enough cash, took they behinds in their car. And hey, that's what happened, because the police was laughing on the, uh, on the speaker, too. Yeah, they was. Dummies. They took, rode them around the corner and took them in the house and put them in the closet. Because they're not from this community and contributing to crime in this community, they on the cell phone in the closet. Oh, what street you on? I don't know. <laughs> What's in front of the house? A bush and a gate. The hell block you on? I don't know. They on the phone wasting our manpower for two damn hours. And you know what happened in them two hours? You had an armed robbery. 350 Clinton Avenue Lincoln liquor store at five to 10. Guess who had to come handle that? New Jersey State Police. Five minutes after that, you had to hold up again. And he should have been closed, Raz. At 
1905 at the wing fling joint on Lyons and Clinton Place. Texas chicken wings or whatever. I don't eat them. I don't know. And you should have been closed. So because we had, and because I was on the scene, because I am the assistant police director with no check, over 30 police cars looking for these two white women. 30, because I counted them. We had every ESU truck. We had cars from the North District. We had cars out the East District looking for these two white women. So now we got crime going on, all this in the city, and we got to call the state police in for this nonsense because we got people walking around with shotguns, AK-47s, because, yeah, I rode over on Lines Avenue. I ain't scared. If there's a couple of police cars there, I could get out. And we're just allowing this to continue in our city. Ron, I know you're busy. But if you don't put South Orange Avenue, 18th Avenue, Bergen Street on our end, on that damn restaurant uh, store closing ordinance tonight, Ron, we're going to fight. And I'm sending you to D.C. But if you don't put them, the chicken shack is open 3 o'clock in the morning. Rafiq, Pookie, and Ibn at the chicken holiday on South Orange Avenue all night long. Because, see, I'm on patrol after 11. I ride this city after 11. Y'all don't do it, but I do. Ain't nothing going on in the South War since we put that ordinance in fact. Nothing, because I ride. Clear, Raheem and them ain't got no damn place to hang out. They carry their ass in the house. Every place else, off the hook, out of control. So now because we do one ordinance, now y'all don't let these business owners, who y'all scared of, they don't live here, open up these 24-hour corner stores. They get around the ordinance. Here go the ordinance, short and simple, make the motion. Tonight. Because if Corey walked in here with something, you vote on it tonight. So Donna giving you something, vote on it tonight. You got to do, the North Pop Warner is disbanded tonight. Tonight, right now, when I get finished, tonight. It's disbanded. And it's now going to be the North, North Jersey, Pop Warner League. That way Raz ain't got to spend no more money. They ain't got to come here begging for no shirts. And we could get another 4,000 kids to play football. And we might could make it all year round to give them something to do. Then we're going to do the same thing with the basketball. We're going to call it the North, North Jersey Basketball Leagues. So that we not only play the kids in North, but we get that exposure. You know how many kids leave North to go play outside? But y'all don't have a problem with that. Kid go to Don Bosco, live in North. Mother ain't paying their tuition because the white folks understand the value in our children more than we do. That's the bottom line. Now, two more things. Y'all won't ask for no money. So I'm going to the Port Authority board meeting, me, Raz, and Cassandra, and we're going to get another billion dollars because y'all scared to ask. Corey won't ask. Sharp asked. Sharp got $1.2 billion. Donna going to ask. Donna going to get $2.89 mil, billion, excuse me, billion, with a B, billion, with a B. And I'm going to pay the bills, and I'm not going to pay y'all for six months. That's how that's going to work. Because you just allow Cory Booker to do over 50 executive order raises. Kareem Arnold, $50,000 raise. What planet that happened on? And that's a fact. I got a copy of it. Director of Sanitation, 50,000 raise. Are we serious? Are y'all serious? One person? One person? And if we would have left, see, every time, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, easy. I, I got you, Joanne. I got you, Joanne. Trust me, Joanne, I got you. Just let me finish this right here, because they did this for you. Every time y'all create an authority, this is why you, we know you ain't doing no damn water. Every time you create an authority, y'all take money away from this city. You got the parking authority. I got seven tickets right now. Anybody want to send me money? Call me after the meeting. Seven. Because this council voted for the meters in front of City Hall on Hill Street and Broad Street to only be one hour. Y'all did that because y'all don't read nothing. Before we put the pay your meter in, two hours. Then you put pay your meters out there and you can't even put a dollar in there. You got to have change or credit card. Y'all ain't stealing my credit card to be buying no stuff down at the parking authority. Do y'all know how serious identity theft is? 
in this country? You want me to put a park, uh, uh, my credit card? And I ain't got but two. And that parking meet outside, not gonna happen. I ain't got but $500 credit. I'm gonna use 10, and somebody gonna come behind me and use 100, and I can't shop. And that's a reality. Then I got to go through, <laughs> who would wanna be me? I don't know. But it could happen. So now y'all made the parking one hour. Y'all did that because I checked at the authority. Now when I pay the $46 for the raggedy ticket, <coughs> The city get $15, and the parking authority get 30. Now, what damn rocket scientist came up with that? When the whole $46 could have came right here. When Sharp James was the mayor, and we had budget hearings, Judge Allison Brown Jones used to have to come over here and report how much revenue she had over there. Every year, it was over $150 million profit from parking tickets and court fines, because y'all do charge us. Now we down to less than $60 million. You tell me what sense that make. Who put the red light cameras on Bergen Dam Street? Bergen Street? Are y'all like serious? And y'all got five of them on there, between Hawthorne Avenue and Avon. And then you let Mr. Muhammadish hey, wrap it up, please. You let Mr. Muhammadish go out and put no right turn at every red light thing. Why I can't make a right turn on Bergen and Avon after uh, 9 p.m. when Rafiq and Pookie is trying to figure out how they could get in my car while I'm sitting at the damn light? You want to know why we the number one carjacking capital in the world in Newark? Because y'all create this crime because you don't watch. Every citizen who has torn up their car Wrap on y'all missed mark bumps, <coughs> come down here, get your paperwork, and sue the city for the repair to your axles. And one last thing, whoever go down, got to do 20 years to be a senior member. Whoever go down, need to be able to deal with legislation and been doing that. And it's no disrespect. That man record speaks to that. But whoever go in there, it's only a two year term. We ready to fight for the next two if it ain't the right person. But let me clearly say this. There's a scholarship that comes in that office. And ain't a black student in the last 10 years received one in the 10th congressional district. Fact, fact. No, it's not. I myself submitted 75 African-American student applications for the scholarship for 2011, including staff that work in all of your offices, children. They did not even receive an acknowledgement letter nor a denial letter as to whether they would get it or not get it. And Will and I worked very hard to get those applications in. It is an insult to the people in the 10th Congressional District, because it wasn't just Nork that I went to, to not even receive a response from that office. And that ain't personal. That's just how we need to do business. And when we sent $650,000 earmark for youth at risk money to Montclair, who only got one murder a year, and we doing one murder a day, and IYO getting ready to close, <laughs> above the rim no money, $650,000 would have been a lifeline in that South Ward. Okay. And the crime would have been a lot less. When we go, we got to represent the people, not interests. And I ain't interested in seeing Sammy Gonzalez on nobody's staff. And I know that's the deal that's been made. Mr. President. Hey, uh, let, me, let me just, let me just I, you know, I normally, normally don't respond to uh, issues that concern me personally or in this seat. As you said, I ran for this seat, so it comes with the territory. But that fact about the scholarships that are given out by that congressional office is just not a fact. I was there, I was there at the award ceremony this year, and there were a multitude of African American children throughout the district that receive scholarships and have over the last 20 years. So that is just not a fact. And that's the only thing I will respond to. 
That was not a fact. Councilman Rice. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> a motion, uh, Mr. Clerk. Um, I, I do want to add South Orange Avenue to the list, but I also need a good. Well, the, and the only reason why we're not doing 18th Avenue is because we're still trying to work out bordered things with Irvington. Um, and, I'm, and my West Ward Merchant Association is, is working on that. But South Orange Avenue, but I also need to get a, a clarification on what the waiver process is. Um, I'm, a, I'm aware that the council has some right in that, but I also heard that Corporation Council told me that we don't. So I need some kind of clarification on what the waiver process is for individual oh, businesses. I can speak to that. Because I do have a business on South Orange Avenue that, that is an open, it's a cigar bar. So I do want them to get a waiver in order to be able to, to, be able to do what they need to do. Councilman Baraka. Um, first, I, I was going to speak to this anyway. One, uh, the, the folks that are taking advantage or, or keeping their store open, you know, to be smart, extra minutes, so forth and so on, they need to be fined uh, and, 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 and law needs to be enforced upon them. There are people who are doing that. Though all of the stores close, but there are some people who are lingering on purpose and they need to, shut, they need to make them shut the stores down. Also, uh, I, I would like to, through your chair, uh, just reiterate to the, to, you know, the, the officers in the fifth who are doing a good job enforcing that law, <laughs> that when they go in the store, like they don't have to say, you mad, this is, thank your councilman of the South Fork. <laughs> and, and, and they do that, and I, all of them don't do that, but the ones who are doing that, it's, it's incorrect. It's not, the, it's not like professional, you know, I don't care though, you know, because you advertise in the fact that I, I, that I pushed this ordinance, and I don't have a problem with that. Right. If you think that, I mean, because business people have been approaching me on the street, because I, you know, I walk up and down the street, they approach me and I deal with them. But the, the reality is uh, those stores need to be closed uh, at 10 and we let them stay open to 11. There's only one store that stays open on Clinton Avenue because they hired an armed uh, security guard. The waiver is being administered by the police department. So the, the, the captain of the department of, of the, uh, the district is the, the folk that's di generally on, uh, in charge of that waiver. So the store owners speak to them and I guess they uh, exhibit uh, or, or show good faith, uh, you know, effort to begin to try to secure the area uh, for them to get this waiver. And they also have to prove that there's no incidents of crime or loitering or other kinds of things around the establishment uh, as well. I mean, and, and they look at that, but the only person that's been waived in the South is the guy right there on Clinton Avenue in Chadwick because he has a, he paid for an armed guard to be out there if, with him, so. I appreciate okay. it, thanks. <clears throat> All right, thank you. Yeah. Sir? Abdul Shahid Ahmad. Abdul Shahid Ahmed, 182 Johnson Avenue, Newark, New Jersey, 07108. I didn't come here this evening to discuss Pop Warner, but uh, misnomers have been delivered. When you sit and you talk with Mike James, when you sit and you talk with this group here that wants to be a piggyback to what 27 years ago since the inception of Pop Warner, Anthony Timmons was there. A year ago when Al Tariq White stepped down, since 30 years we have not had the state championship in this city. I am so proud to say, go back and look at the tape, it was my son, middle linebacker, Abdul Sabor Ahmed, his hand stopped them cheating niggas from winning, brought the state championship here but that, it doesn't stop there. It's my alma mater, weak way, that he did it for. Having said all of that, Don is right. Under Mike James, Newark Pop Warner needs to be disbanded. It's disrespectful that the four of you, black males, don't know the history of that. And then we wouldn't have to come here and lay it out to you because you would already know, and you wouldn't know what to do. And guess what? You would have did that six years ago when you got here. It's that simple. If you knew the history, you would not have allowed anyone 
but Anthony Timmons or Julius Mumford to take over at Weekway High School if you were concerned about those children of the South Ward. The continuity that it would have brought to the city, not just to the program, by someone who have worked with the children for the last 15 years and 27 years with Anthony Timmons. But because you don't know the history, no, excuse me, you don't care about the history, you can't make motivative change. I didn't come here to talk about that. What's more important to me is who's going to Washington to represent my interests. In 2005, I came to Ronald Rice Jr. I gave him a host of documents. I connected the dots for him of the criminality of the Newark Criminal Police Department, which prompted him to make what he takes this honor and glory about, the first investigation into all of its dealings. <laughs> Abdusheed Ahmed did that. Ask me, six years later, what's the resolve of it all? Ask me, six years later, he taunts about the investigation of the Injustice Department coming here. They want to investigate something? You tell me how DJ be on Irving Turner Boulevard for 40 years, he never had his store stopped fully, set aside, from having a, a awning outside to let people know he was there. How is it possible that you have bodega after bodega after bodega? They set up shop. Now either they got stimulus from Obama or it's drug money. It's one or the other. What, what you doing here? Where's the investigation with that? You fool. Where's it at? Don't see it. I'm concerned about it but you want to represent my interests. Where? At what point? As I yell to you, Councilman Rice, Darren Nance, he's been fighting this good fight for 15 years. Just this afternoon, he handed you a document from the Office of Administrative Law that said what? Put him back to work. What you gonna do? You, you, I ain't hear you. What you gonna do? I said, I'll tell you when you finish. You, you no, know, tell me now. What you gonna do? Sir, please finish. Please, hold on, hold on, Councilman. <laughs> Sir, please finish. To any event, to any event, at the same time in 2005, myself and several other colleagues, we compiled information and data surmising a 92 page document, a document that I handed to Councilman Baraka's aid, what happened to it? That was June 2011. We, in, we almost in June 2012. You had 10 of those, and they committed criminal crimes. And you had 10 of ours, and it was nothing but administrative. There's a document that you have to fill out before retirement. It says, are there any pending charges? All 10 of them had charges, but they have my $7,000 in property tax every month for a check that they have not earned, that they should not be getting. Vincent Gagliano, that faggot for one. Barry Colicelli, that homo for two. And the list goes on and on. And this, this is how you're going to represent me in Washington? So you're behaving just like the boys do over there on Green Street. They in the academy one month, they come in, they make their $1,250 donation to you, and they become a detective. It's that simple. So what you want from me, forget about your experience on the county, and I'm still not counting yours because you produce nothing. Forget about your experience on the state and just bump you up, straight up, to the federal government. Really? 
Really? That's what you want from me, an educated voter. <laughs> Bruh, please. Those are nice words. And you know I could get very nasty. Sir, In I'm fact, gonna, I'm gonna ask you to wrap this up. person here <laughs> and this woman here threw me out for being very nasty, but several people came here this evening and said worse words than I could ever have said. Why weren't they removed? But they call you honorable, but yet no one has lodged against you physical harm or aggression. Why is my tax dollars standing at the back of this room? I don't want to see them. They should be out there earning their keep. No one's going to bring you harm. Everyone has stood up here, they made some type of proposal. Here's what I'm saying to you. In my 20 years of coming to this mic, no one has ever caused any physical harm to any council person, to my knowledge. So therefore, their, their presence is unnecessary. Respect the taxpayers, put them where they belong, I'm where they're you. mostly needed, Drop. out on the street. Wrap it up, sir, Not please. standing here. Wrapping it up, as you say, Two weeks ago, I went to South Carolina University to pick up my 19-year-old. He's back here in the city. I gave him your four names for a job. None of my seven sons are out there on the block. I said seven. Three, Winston-Salem University. One, William Patterson University. One, Rutgers. I just said, South Carolina University. My baby boy, I gotta beat on him a little bit. Oh, excuse me, I gotta discipline him. But nonetheless, he ain't hit the block. That's what I've done and been doing and will continue to do. My 19 year old needs a job. He's home from college in a city that he's born and raised in. You have supposedly two jobs. Give him one. Give him one. I'm going to rest there. Council President, can I speak? And I'm next, Mr. President. Thank you. Um, so everybody jump in. Councilman Baraka. Yeah, because one, two, three. I, I'm one of those four, I think. He, right. I was Don't there. Think you are. Yeah, so I was there. The history, I do know the history of, of all of that in the South War. I actually was born and raised in the South War, played South War Little League, and uh, participated in Pop Warner when I was a kid. I do know Anthony Timmons, been there when you was there. You seen me uh, there, that's number one. Uh, participated in that and still participate in that. And I know you're upset, you know how I know you're upset? Because when you sub at my school, when we call you and you talk to the kids at the school, the kids tell me, because they love me. That's wonderful, but, I want you to so, know, that's why I told you. But, but let, me, let, me, let, me, let me finish. And you're and you always welcome to come back. Good. The four. It's no big deal. But it's more I'm, schools. I'm there um, uh, throughout the South Ward with, with uh, and I was the vice principal at Weekway when your son was there and they won the championship. And Weekway this year uh, went to the state championship. Unfortunately, they didn't win, but they did a great job. And I think they got a good coach and staff over there. And, um, and Julius Monfort is at Central High School with me. I brought him over there with me. Why? Because I, I do know the history of what's going on in the South War, and I wanted to make sure that there was some continuity, as you said. Mm -hmm. and, That's I brought, right. and I brought him over to Central, the same way I bring you over to Central to, to, okay. to sub. I brought him over to Central mm -hmm. to coach mm -hmm. the kids over there, and I let the other brother who lives around the corner from Weekway, who also does a great job coaching, mm -hmm. Support him to coach at Weekway so that we all can have something that we ain't trying to kill each other. We could debate other. about that. We, we ain't, we ain't, we ain't trying to kill each other over one or two things. That, there's enough out here for all of us. So, and, and they actually did a good job because they went to the state tournament. And Nutt is doing a good job. Julius is doing a great job at Central because I think they're going to do well in this upcoming season. And as far as Anthony Timmons and Pat Council and the rest of them go, uh, when they uh, moved away from Pop Warner and started the North Jersey uh, uh, and went to North Jersey, Jackie Robinson. They, they had no choice. Right, right. They had no choice because the, what was going on in Pop Warner was horrible. They, they came and, and I gave them the support to do that. Mm. We went and got money for them. Uniforms, helmets, cheerleaders, trophies, everything. And I, and I went to the games and they looked beautiful and I represented in the parents. 
saw me there. So, because I understand the continuity and the love for the, the so kids in the South job. Fork. So when, so, when you go home and talk to Anthony Timmons, you tell him, ask him, does Councilman Baraka support him and Pat and the rest of them and North Jersey? But you know what? You ain't got to ask him because you, you already job. know that. You did you are, your job. I did my job. Okay, I'm not all. impressed. So I, I just, I don't want you to I'm be not impressed. impressed. I, don't want impre I don't want you to be impressed. I just want you okay. to tell the truth. So why are you telling me that? Fast forward. I'm telling Fast you, forward. I'm telling you that, brother, because you, you made a statement about four, and I just want to correct the record. And when you talk, I let you speak. So it's called debate. So we could, we, we could disagree. I'm just telling you that you're wrong. You've been disagreeing for 20 years. No, we have, nah, we have off and on. You know, it's, uh, it's got a little rougher. Years. It got a little rougher now coming up, you know, but... I've known you for a long time. Okay. And I've been here, so don't pretend that I wasn't there then and I'm not here now. All we, right. Because I'm always out here, so just, just want to make that point clear. And as far as the stuff you gave me, uh, I was given that stuff by other officers as well. We've been arguing and fighting that case, not fighting intricate. those cases with those officers. And not they haven't, intricate. and that's, that's very true. And they, very true. No, and no, they, not specific, not intricate. Excuse me? Not specific and not intricate as my organization. Oh, okay. Well, they, other people gave me some stuff. You gave us some stuff. We've been arguing and fighting inside, trying to make them do something about some equity with that. And we raised that over and over again. It's a, and it was called, it's what's called a protracted struggle, which means it goes over a period of time. Because though we appear to have power, it, it obviously appears that we don't. You know, we still have forces that we have to fight to make sure that there's equity in the department and there's equity uh, uh, in this city. And, and I do my job in terms of fighting to make sure that African-American police officers in this city have representation on this council because my voice is their voice and I've been making sure that that's real mm -hmm. and I do that uh, yeah, don't, every don't day. Don't see that, don't feel that. Uh, every day. Well, other officers don't do. Don't see that, don't feel that. Other officers do. When you, you know, uh, you should come to some of the Brian Shields events oh, or well, hey, other events that uh, other folks have. They probably good at kissing have. boots. I don't kiss boots. You know, I don't kiss boots either. I just Rings. do what I think is right. That's all. But, I, you know, we could, we could finish this after the meeting. I'm not going to hold everybody up for that. Who's next? Just want to make sure that you knew, that I know. Councilman Rice. Same story. Who's I see next? you at, the, at Central High School when you come there to sub tomorrow. If they call me. Who ne who's next? So, 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 so Ab, I, don't, I don't pat myself on the back and beat my chest about what are just the facts. And I'm not, listen, I, I got no beef with you. I respect you, brother, and I always have. The reality is, is that would I like to have done more? Would I like to see more being done? Absolutely. If, if you think a lot of it is my fault that having things that have been done, then we're going to simply agree to disagree. But, but these are just simply the facts. You absolutely did. I give you credit for it every time I go out and talk about this stuff, that you gave me the information that made me start looking at this police department the way it needed to be looked at. And the fact of the matter is we started moving the ball rolling. The only reason why I point to the fact that we were the first to ever start an investigation and into a city department is because it's just fact. We had to make up, we had to find a way to do it. We had to make up the procedural points on how to do it. We had to find a use of our subpoena power. We kept hitting roadblocks and kind of go down different ways. So we just carved the path for other things to be done. We carved the path for the, for the, for the, uh, for the investigation into the water. We, we carved the path for other people to do investigative work into departments. That's just the first fact. The second fact is, well, I'm not looking for applause. I'm just saying it's just fact. The second, the second fact is... But it produced nothing. Well, let me finish, brother. Let me, let me just finish. They're clapping because they're ignorant to the facts. It produced well, nothing. I'm when saying, you do something, you so, want so let a me result. Finish. Let me, let me, let There's me finish, no brother. result. Brother, let me just finish. So, so, so we move from there and we recognize what our subpoena power could and could not do. And so we all agreed, working together with police officers and folks who have been affected, that we should try to get the feds involved in this because we could do no more at the city level. We could not do any more in the state level. And you know that, brother. I mean, I'm not, I'm not preaching anything new to you. And so we work with the ACLU to bring the feds in here. That investigation continues because of the information we glean from our investigation on the city level. And I agree with you. So do we need to have an answer from the feds by now? Yes. But we do we have it? No. And so my point is, then we, we have to go to another level of inquiry, then we will do such. But no other city in the state is doing more than we have, and no other council person or council persons has done more than we have tried to do. If, if you can point to one, then show it to me. The, the last thing is, Darren Nance, you're right. For decades has been waiting to have his thing settled. We got him paid. You had your own situation, but you're not heads against the wall. We got you paid. Of so no, the reality of, is- Of no help from you. 
Okay. Don't say that. Come on. Okay, I got proof otherwise. Went through its That's process. Not I got proof otherwise. Nah, I'm not going to stand here and let you do brother. that, boy. That's not I'm not right. trying to it say. It went through its process. You know That's not right, it's all, brother. It's all good. It went through its process. Oh, you oh, will oh, not. And who called your you attorney? You will not get anything off of that. Who called your attorney? You and the other three. Who moved it, it up on the agenda? It went through the process. Who moved it How up on the agenda? How did you help me? We moved it up on the agenda and got it fast tracked, brother. That's exactly what we did. Come on. Come on. Brother, you were there every phone call. Ask your attorney. Ask your attorney whether that happened Listen, or not. Listen, stop it. Stop it. You stop. Okay, stop I it. No, I, I won't. I got his number right okay? here, brother. I got his number you right here. Some accolades, you get nothing from I got me. his number right here, brother. Did nothing. Right here. It went through All a right. process. All right. A process of which, of which you didn't know about. Right. You're right. You right. You didn't know about it, and the three of them, Charlie, did not know about it. I got his That's right. what I was I told. I got your attorney's right. number right here, my Mr. friend. Mr. You would have got paid without us. Come on, man. That's definitely not the truth. That's definitely Listen, not the truth. do right. your job. They wouldn't have gave you nothing. Bottom line, us. do your job. They wouldn't have gave you anything without us. Listen, out of your mouth anything. into ignorance, do your job. Okay? They wouldn't have gave you a dime without us, brother. Listen, we, we could rewind the tape, but we could we, take this <clears throat> back, and we could challenge your words. Because I'm all about that. We could. It went through its process. Good night. All right. Well, I'm not. Now, anything else? Uh, I'm not. No disrespect, brother. We just see. We, we, just, I, we listen, disagree. Listen. We, we disagree, brother. I, I will not, in the least bit, feel disrespected by any mutterance of your words. Wow, that's deep, man. Okay. That's, that's deep. That's real deep. That's, that's real, real deep. I, I expect it. No, no, no. Okay, it, sir. It's real deep, man. That's all right. real deep. That's real deep. That's all I got to say. Uh, that's real deep. That's deep. Mr. Abdus. On a lot of levels, that's deep. Okay. Guys, that bullet. All right. Uh, that's deep on a next lot of speaker. Levels. On a lot of levels, that's deep. Jose G. Morales. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that's all I got to say, man. I ain't used to surprise, man. I'm How we doing, man. ladies and gentlemen? We don't want no problems for y'all. Y'all too big, man. It's a me. long day, huh? <laughs> I hear you. Uh, first off, we would like to, uh, with Iron Gang Institute, would like to thank Give me that the ring office. Again. I'm Give sorry? Give me that ring again. Huh? No, I'm saying, give me that ring again. Uh, <laughs> the two more ring, that's what he want. We would like to thank the office of uh, Donald Payne Jr. Um, for the services provided through, uh, rendered by Michael Payne, I mean, Michael Gray, and uh, getting this far. So we appreciate that. Uh, basically, we're here to introduce the Gridiron Institute and what we uh, want to bring to Newark. Well, we. And we're glad that we were able to help, but uh, Councilman Gonzalez was um, one of the major spearheaders, and we just joined in with his efforts. So we need to give Councilman Gonzalez um, the recognition in terms of it. Absolutely. Also, uh, Deputy Mayor, she does a wonderful job, and we... Uh, that's where, oh, that's where it came. Oh, okay. <laughs> Gonzalez also, but we, also, we, we thank everybody that has okay. helped us. So now, Get I, here. so now I know how you got Gonzalez. Okay. <laughs> so we, right. we, we thank everybody, though. We appreciate everybody's help and, and assistance in this, especially to bring to the great city of Newark and the new development. So um, I'm going to pass it. If, if it's okay, I would like to forfeit so I can pass it over to my colleague if it's okay. Well, you know, three minutes. We have, three we minutes. Have, <laughs> no, well. We have a problem here because um, when I saw that you were on the, I saw you were on the. All right. Now we uh, the rules of the rules of the um, hearing of citizens. Yes, sir is the person that signed up, has to do the presentation. Uh, we were privy to a presentation from the gentleman behind you yesterday. Correct. So we, uh, we know what they are um, uh, uh, entertaining and looking to do in the city. Absolutely. And we gave them our full support yesterday. Thank you. So, um, you know, uh, I'm glad they were here to hear some of the issues that we have going on with our Pop Warner and uh, in the city, and maybe there are some ways that even through what you want to do, we can partner to help us move uh, that entity forward also. So um, if you want to use your time 
you will be allowed to, but unfortunately, if they are not actual names on the roster, they cannot speak. But as I said, we did, we did get a full presentation from them yesterday. Absolutely. And we're, and we're, and we're, thank all, you again. And we're all in support. So I'm sorry you waited all this time um, and not had the opportunity to speak. Okay. Uh, so briefly, secondly, uh, we want to, again, thank you and uh, everyone who, with this assistance of uh, trying to bring this to the great city of Newark, as I said before. Um, again, this is just a, a great innovative program that we are trying to introduce and bring here to the children. I believe that as a resident of Newark, also, you know, done a lot of work here, work at the Newark YMCA, Newark Public School System. I think the kids should receive something like this. Um, I think it will definitely help them out. The edu educational background that this program have is uh, very much needed to show some sort of uh, responsibility um, into these kids, embedding them. So. We're not gonna take much time. As you guys said, we've seen the promos and all the great things that we wanna bring here. A lot of things been going on. I teach boot camp and I'm tired. I feel like I taught two classes back to back. Um, so again, we wanna just thank you from the Gridiron Institute. We're looking forward to coming to Newark, working with everyone here. And please, if we, there's any way we could assist in other um, activities, we're here to help. Okay, what, what, I, what I will allow is just allow them to put their names on the record um, from the Gridiron organization and the um, NFL teams that they were associated with in their careers and are here to try to partner uh, with the city and our youngsters in giving them uh, an opportunity to um, benefit from their um, skills and their life experiences in making our young people productive citizens. So I will allow them to put their names on the record and, and um, tell uh, who, where they played and um, their Absolutely. experience. All right. Thank you very much. Sounds good. Hello, Councilman. Thank you very much. And Councilwoman, no, she's not here. My name is Darian Barnes. I'm a seven-year NFL veteran. I've played for the Giants. I've played for Tampa, Dallas, Miami, Jets. Buffalo, Detroit, New Orleans. I'm also a New Jersey native uh, from the Jersey Shore. And uh, I have you got that team. Super Bowl ring that I was trying to keep yesterday. Yes, I do All have right. that. All right, championship ring. But, uh, All once right. again, thank you very much. And thank we'll hope you. to work with you really soon. Yeah. Hello, Councilman. I am the executive director of Gridiron Gang, which is giving ILS his new goals. My name is Damian Gregory. I'm a veteran of the NFL for six years, also worked at the NFL alumni office right here in Newark for the last three months. So I know exactly some of the stuff that's going on in Newark um, on a day-to-day -day basis, and I intend on helping in any way we can. Thank you. Sir? My name is Damian Jackson. I did not play in the NFL. I had an injury that they called a lack of talent. However, <laughs> we all resemble that. <laughs> In the past 10 years, I've been a financial professional working with agents and uh, professional athletes. And I've been acting as the CFO for the Gridiron organization. And I've seen some of the work that they've done. And I have to tell you that it's quite spectacular seeing the kids come out of that program, not just being improved athletically on the field, but more so in their behavior in school, scholastically, and surprisingly for me, the community activity that followed. They became you know, more entrenched in their surroundings, which is something that I think Nor could Thank you. greatly need. Thank you very thank much. You. Mr. President, if I may just- Councilman uh, Gonzalez. Just thank uh, them for waiting for six hours. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, to tell that you couldn't speak. And we, <laughs> we appreciate what you're trying to do, and we support you 100%. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. All right. Next speaker. Yuri Lev. Not appearing. Esther Williams. Not appearing. Atta Boma. Yes, he's here. Appearing. Yes. Yeah, good morning, uh, Council. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, First of all, uh, I thank you all for taking your time for such a long time uh, to deal with the problems within the 
within the city of uh, Newark. I'm still on TV. I just wanna, I just wanna start up with the sanitation. If you look at my uh, paper attending, it's the three things I need to speak about: sanitation, the police, and uh, education. I believe the whole entire council can turn around and look at the city. Everywhere there's a dumping area, t TV sets, couch, mattress, sink toilet and so on. My question is, I have about eight residents in my area, 95, 85, 90 years old ladies. They don't have no transportation. Well, having said all this, according to the, uh, the private con sanitation contracts, they are not taking all these items. Why do you want the residents to take all these items? An 85-year-old lady, she don't have a transportation. Why does she want to take a set of television to the city town area? I think I'm asking the city council to meet the contractor of the sanitation in that area to revisit the conditions they are putting the residents into. It's a very, very important. The city need to do something about it and make our city filthy because of, I don't know whether the sanitation company is making their own law or it comes from the city. I'm asking the city to sit down and take a look into it. It's a very, very serious. It makes the city look like the leaders in this city are not doing anything and they put the blame on one particular person and that's our mayor. But if the mayor doesn't make a decision, it takes the whole nine panel to make a decision. Now, abandoned houses, you go to White Terrace. Right now, there are so many abandoned houses, we don't know the owners. They don't live in the city. Some of them, California, Florida, you name it. I'm asking this council to ch charge them more money for cleaning or for cleaning the property. If you charge them for five hundred dollars, two hundred and fifty dollars, that's a peanuts. It needs to be more fine. If not, the city needs to have a, another way to get the burden from the owners. Because they know, hey, if I leave it there for 10 years, 5 years, what is it, $250 by one cleaning? It needs to be done. Something needs to be done in the sanitation system and also the code enforcement need to do more. I know they just lay off some, most of the workers. It, it doesn't come from the city. It comes from the top because the state whereby Mr. Christie said there's no more money. It make it tight for the city to run the city. But you are the guys we put our hope on you. You got to go over there or rally some of the residents behind you, go to Trenton and sit down with him for them to make sure you do your job because it takes the whole village to raise a child. Now, the police issue. The police, how long they have to wait before they get their contracts? The contract between the city and the police is luck. I don't know. I don't have a family member in the police force. But as a community leader, as a district leader, something has to be presented to the city council to do more to overlook the issues they brought it to the table. I know some of you have been here a lot of report. The old police personnel, they are taking their shares off because they are not getting a fair treatment. I don't blame the new director because he just got in. He just got in. It's something it need to be addressed. It been there for a decade. Police officers get fired for little, little things, especially the Latinos and the blacks. 
If you look at some of the issues where they get fired, hearsay, there's no substantial evidence. But because who was sitting in the board that time, I not been in your office, pre uh, uh, Council President, Council Rice, I discuss all the, it's not that easy. It's easy for me to talk about it because it's a part of my community job. But for you to present it to the state level, you got to go through a lot of hair. Most of the residents don't know that. But still, you don't have to sit down. You got to continue to push the pressure on. Maybe we may not get answer today, but down the road, we may get a fair share. Education system. Last month, I was here to talk about education. I don't know who's sitting on the board. If you look at it, you go to Bergen County. They spend $12,000 per one student. They get the returns. 95% got to college. Come to Newark. We spend 20000 per one student. Our tax money. What do we get? 95% dropout. Hello? What are we doing? We need to take this into Trenton. Say, wait a minute. We know we don't control the school board. But now it's the time for us to control our own school board. So we can monitor what is going in the city. Yeah. Commissioner for Education, he lives somewhere down South Jersey. He don't know what is going on in Newark. Hey, wrap it up, please, sir. That's the problem. My captains, captain on the fifth prison and the fourth prison. That's what they are getting it. So the same as the rest of the world. Because the dropout rate is so huge. But nobody is addressing that. It's a very important, Mr. President, you take this to the next council meeting and do something to help our youth. Thank you. Now. Oh. Yeah. Sir, you're going to have to wrap it up, please. Yes, I'm wrapping up, Mr. President. It's my time, but we know it's in the morning, but we have to do it. I have to come out with this. Okay. I'm asking the council to put a discipline in this house there's no discipline in this house we as a people have to respect you for our children who look at the tv or whatever going on in the city hall can also respect the parents we come down here cursing feel to us don't respect the chair the president or any council member i don't think it's right and that's what the councilman Rasbaraka said. If we have to put a fine, take it, or disband the person not to come to the city council meeting because you are not showing a good character. You are not telling us you are a good citizen. So, on that note, I'm asking the council all these issues. I will be back next council meeting to see if I can get good answer. You have a good morning. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, let me and let me let me just say that uh, the hour is late and uh, this meeting was extensively long. And uh, to my colleagues, thank you for hanging in there. But uh, as the um, citizens have suggested ways to um, balance uh, the meeting and the hearing of citizens, we're going to have to adhere to the guidelines and people taking time, more time than they're supposed to, have at this chair, it may not be acknowledged, but this chair has been lenient since it has arrived. And there's a three minute limit, but people get anywhere from five, I've given five minutes since I've been here. We've gone to five, we're gonna to have to adhere to five. And I promise my colleagues that we are going to stick to the rules and adhere to them from this point on. And anyone that can't abide by them is gonna to have to leave this chamber. I've been, lenient, I've been lenient too long, and it's time to do what we need to do. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Roll call. Last call. <laughs>
I want some cherry key apple oranges, even though I got some strawberry. Yes. 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 Just five. Yes. 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 Yes.